Yes, good afternoon to all you viewers and fans out there on our beautiful sunset safari here at Juma Private Game Reserve, Sabi Sands, South Africa. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cedric Dold, and uh, behind the camera on Rusty, we've got Igor. And uh, yes, today on Wendy, we are going to have Rexon and Odie. And of course, in Pridelands, we're going to have Chris Panda and Penguin Beach is joining us as well for the beginning of our show. And of course, we'll also welcome the old Jax and Jason. So yes, welcome everybody. So, so glad that you guys could join us on a, such a beautiful afternoon here at Juma Private Game Reserve. As you can see, we are live, we are interactive. So if anybody's got any, any questions, suggestions or comments, please go onto our social social uh, media webpage, uh, Twitter, and go on to hashtag Wild Earth, or go on to our website, wildearth.tv, go on to our channel page, and make sure that you do register with us. And of course, everybody and all the kids under the age of 18 years old, please pop us an email at kidsquestions at wildearth.tv. Yes, it is Friday the 13th. It is our lucky an un unlucky day, so our superstition and all those weird things happens around here in the African bush and we will talk all about it. So of course, Rexon, Chris and myself, and I think Jax has already mentioned there at Penguin Beach about whistling. Uh, not a good idea to whistle at the coast because you actually uh, draw some wind in, if I'm not mistaken. Or if you take some bananas out at sea, that means that's an unlucky charm. So yes, interesting. So many different things, so many different ways and traditions around you in the African bush. But of course, I've got my uh, leopard claw in my pocket. So I'm really holding thumbs that we can at least find some rosettes, some uh, cats for you this afternoon, and maybe, of course, uh, other interesting stuff around you. But just remember, send us comments, questions, keep all of us on our toes and entertained, and we're gonna try and keep you guys entertained as well. Of course, I'm standing nicely on top of a nice termite mound, nicely lofted, perfect for, perfect for a good old uh, viewpoint. But let's see what the weather is like here at uh, Juma Private Game Reserve. As you can see, it is a very hot day. It is going to be quite a scorcher today. So definitely we are going to do a little bit of dam hopping, I'm sure, um, to take a look at the watering holes to see if anything is down at the watering holes today and this afternoon. Um, but uh, yes, other than that, I'm hoping that we're going to find some awesome, awesome things for everybody this afternoon as well. On top of that, so there's, I think some vehicle just went past me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And of course, you know, to, tomorrow night is a fireside chat. Please, all the explorers, join us after the sunset drive. Uh, we've got a fireside chat. And uh, of course, we've got Graham Wellington that's going to be discussing what's happening with uh, Wild Earth. So that is going to be very exciting as well. As well, you know, on the 22nd of May, our son as well, but, um, of course, we've got a tribute to uh, to him. So please send all your videos, all your special moments with her son. Of course, if it's a sunset or sunrise um, drive, just make sure that uh, it's a uh, dated and send them to final control at wildearth.tv. All right. This morning we were driving and suddenly we heard a lot of commotion. I think the wild dogs might have caught an impala then, or the leopard might have caught the impala, and as it was dragging it, the wild dog saw it, started chasing the leopard up into the tree, and then the hyenas came to steal it. <coughs> Sighting. With the traditional stories I've learned that uh, it does have future and a past. If you follow it, you'll never ever go wrong in life. It's 
very important because it contains, of course, the history background and the knowledge of the bush. In each every family, they have so-called a tree or ama ruler tree. We'll go there and kneel down and talk to the tree and say, we want success in the family. Okay, so I'm gonna head now. What I'm thinking of doing, I'm gonna go towards Central and uh, Nyala South, take a look around there. I know Rexon said he had a lot of audio of elephants being uh, disturbed by something this morning around the Mamba Road uh, towards Ledwood, that area. So of course, we're gonna head slowly into that direction and gonna take a look if we can find anything that's very exciting that side. And uh, yes, I'm really holding thumbs, but uh, as I say, please, uh, let us know of uh, anything, any suggestions for you guys, and then let us know, and hopefully we can find them. Well, while we continue, let's head to Rex and for him to say good afternoon, and he's already got some luck on his side. Good afternoon, afternoon everyone, and welcome in the lovely, lovely hot weather of the afternoon here at Safari Live Juma. We are having this elephant in front of us here. From a South Racing this afternoon, I would like to welcome everyone that joined us, and I'm having Owen behind the camera. Really, it's a very beautiful, beautiful afternoon. While we are here, today is a special day. We are doing the lucky thing and the unlucky thing. I understand today, I'm so lucky finding elephant in the society. The elephant is one of the animals that uh, symbolize, if maybe dream an elephant or if you I mean, into the space where you want to understand quite a lot about your fortune. If you are dreaming elephant, you lack with an elephant, it means authority. It means next level in life. So it could be, yes, of course, I'm going to prosper because it looks like I'm very lucky with this elephant. Uh, for the lucky day that we have today, I was trying for a leopard in the morning, and I'm um, so this afternoon, a leopard that came we spotted this breeding herd of elephant which is really 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 great i would like to share with you the big knowledge of an elephant that really in most cases how elephant behave in general if you look at the vegetation where the elephants are it's such amazing amazing vegetation elephant all the time they will migrate time and again in the area where it's quite a lot of viability of grass elephant can co I mean, can collect in a day or single day, up to 150 kg of a grass material in the an area. And that makes, of course, this animal move in selective area of the conservancy where we are in Juma and other part of a reserve. It's not all areas where you can find number of an elephant. They go in an area where they know that uh, they will be managed to survive because they have a huge body. They have to collect quite a lot of huge quantity of grass. Of course, it's such amazing. They eat almost quarter of three quarter of their day. They defecate. I mean, collecting grass as they move all the time. Unbelievable. I love this species. And during a day like this, of course, you see a little bit hot. The skin of an elephant is almost 2.5 centimeter thick. That tells you this uh, animal, it will be very easy to overheat. That's the reason you might find the elephant, if it's too hot, all the time very close to water source. Once they go, get to overheat, they will go down to the riverbed and able to, or oh, the dam, and able to drink, and also make sure that uh, they cool down the body system. If you look at the skin itself, it got lots of cracks. If they pour themselves of uh, water, those cracks is able to really send water in the body system back into the ground. The skin itself is not like other species as far as buffalo. Of course, they can really hold water as they move, they can drip down. Elephant doesn't do that. The water, the skin itself doesn't absorb water. It just 
really run down and go to a uh, soft system again. It's unbelievable species. Ribbon is the matriarch and has recently been seen with injuries to her body. Corky was the previous matriarch and is believed to be taken back her status. Intima was born to Ribbon in February 2017 and also enjoys a high ranking. Hart is the next rank down and in June is believed to be the lowest rank, easily recognizable by a floppy left ear. Three brothers named the Avoca males arrived in Juma in 2018. This area had recently been vacated by the Birmingham boys. In 2019, they were seen mating with females from both prides and went on to sire cubs with them. The most recognizable lion in this coalition is Dark Mane. Aside from the Dark Mane that gave him his name, he can be recognized by a distinctive limp. We are aware that uh, it's one of the most intelligent species in the world, and also it's the biggest mammal in land. It's really, really un uh, unbelievable. The species, in most cases, we really, we, we, we had a lot of uh, elephant in the era that also this morning was a very good practical example when the elephant come and surround the vehicle. The species itself can able to read the body uh, language of a human being. If you are really welcome and able And we're loving to head over to Chris and able to join him and see what might have for the afternoon. Nice little lucky surprise this afternoon. It's actually a very hot one here at Pridelands. It's actually the hottest day since I arrived about <clears throat> sorry, two weeks ago. Now, I have a little story. Before I do that, my name is Chris, as you know, and with me today, yet again, my colleague and friend, Panda. He's going to operate the camera for us today. And while we view the zebras, I'll tell you a little story about my unlucky day today. So remember this morning we were waiting <coughs> for that leopard. We said we just heard it when we departed. I was convinced it's going to cross the road. We left. I remember we went up to the dam and we got word that that leopard literally 10 minutes after we left have crossed literally over our tracks right there where we were standing. And nobody's seen it since. <laughs> right, so I think later on when it's a bit cooler, we will go and work that area again. It's a bit hot. I don't think that our leopard, this side will be moving. It's very hot here today. And we're very close to the town, Hootspreit, which is renowned for being an extremely hot place. Anyway, maybe our luck will change. Maybe my stick just playing games with us today. I always feel if we can find a steenbok, <laughs> hi there Josie, Josie says she's wearing lucky pants today, well I've got my normal kit on, nothing about that that has brought me necessarily luck as such has brought me both luck and unluck, it's a car coming past. It's just one of the arterial roads in the reserve that feeds to a lot of lodges. Just by chance that we have. Oh, there's a little baby zebra, so we are lucky today. Look at that. I'm not sure if you had it on camera. I didn't see it. <laughs> that is tiny. Look at that. Right, looks like we are in luck today. Well, Jodine, about that luck thing, I have my stick. As you've all seen, my little walking stick, that's my lucky charm. But also, and this is something that's not based on any culture, it's just something I felt. If I see a steenbok that is calm, that's not running away from me, I always seem to be lucky afterwards. And that's just an observation from my side. Like I said, it's not based on any cultural beliefs. 
It's just something I've experienced. So if we can find a steambook that's not running away, I reckon that's going to be our ultimate lucky charm on this Friday the 13th. Hey, get away from my baby. In that tree are two carcasses. There's a diker carcass and a water buck. Oh, it's not as graceful as <laughs> He's a bit hesitant because, well, climbing a tree is not the easiest, but he will get up there eventually. So let's see, there he goes. And look at the power in that. That is a massive 500 pound cat that has just climbed a marula tree and is up in there. How cool is this? I don't know how he's going to do it, but let's see. See, the hyenas are far more tolerant of vultures than a lion or leopard would be. Occasionally a hyena will bite sort of a couple of tail feathers out of the back of a vulture, but I've never actually seen them, even once they've caught one, um, actually kill it. Oh, there we go, nearly got him. have to do with the fact that the variation in the bush there is a few more uh, natural open sort of areas which is probably what the zebras prefer but I do see them a little bit more often here than at Juba but now again leopards we don't see as often here so I love how every area have their pros and cons if you can put it that way so you can be lucky and unlucky in both areas no matter where you go in Africa. That foal is tiny now. As you all know, I'm a horseman, love horses, I own horses. And therefore, it just makes perfect sense that I love zebras. Well, as you know, Penguin Beach is still up and running for a while, so let's head over to Jax, who's got something swimming in the water. So, hello everyone, and welcome down to Penguin Beach, a very happy Friday the 13th to you all. My name is Jax. I'm going to be a naturalist down here today. We have Jason behind the camera and we've had some bad luck already. What we really hope to spot for you today is a Cape Wagtail. The Wagtails have made a mass exodus from the area. So what we are going to do is we're going to have a look at our Hartlup skulls. And uh, We've actually found one particular hotlip skull who's very interesting. So he's got a black spot, black spots where his ears would be. Looks very different from all the other hotlip skulls. So I'm a bit perplexed as to if he is a hotlip skull with strange colouring. But hotlip skulls are part of an old fable along the Cape Coast of South Africa. And the old fishermen will say that if there are hardlip skulls and they are all screeching, it could be indicative of the fact that a storm might be on its way. Hardlip skulls tend to love to screech. At sea, they're fairly silent, but if you put them on land, they make a lot of noise. So I'm not entirely sure how true that is. But these skulls are all relaxing. They've been out to sea to fish. They've eaten along the kelp line. These gulls don't live here. They don't breed in this area. So if they want to rest, they are going to rest on the water where nothing might try to eat them or bite them. And some sailors believe that seagulls might carry messages from, from the dead to people. They're not often a sign of good luck. But if you were stranded out on the ocean and you had to see a gull, 
you might think it's good luck because gulls mean that there is land somewhere close and land is always a very good sign. And I was saying on Penguin Beach that shipwrecks and uh, shipwrecks along the Cape Coast are numerous and I think wherever we have shipwrecks we often have folklore, we have superstition. I think humans love to use stories and superstition to explain what we can't explain. Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag WildEarth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. We're just surveying the area here. I was saying that we, we like to use stories to explain what we find inexplainable. And I think that's particularly true with the ocean, which is still so unknown to us. And so often what happens is that if something happens, we will come up with stories to rationalize it, or if we see something happen often enough, we could walk along the seashore and see seagulls calling and have a storm the next day. To us, it would be logical to connect those dots. Our, our brains are hardwired to connect dots and uh, make sense of things. So in South Africa, we don't have very much mythology that relates to the ocean. It's more old fisherman tales. some animals that we do have mythology with along the Cape Coast and one of them would be our Cape Wagtails that we are hoping to find for you on the show today. But I think what we're going to do before we find what we're hoping to show you, I think we're going to go have a look at Cedric because he might just have a surprise in spots for us. Yes, uh, welcome back here to Juma Private Game Reserve as we are all talking about superstition and about lucky and unlucky things. Here we
actually put it in a casing, a wooden casing, and they'll actually keep it in the house where they want that person, so soul, to be rested. So very important, a tree of life. A buffalo thorn is one of the uh, very well-known things that the traditional people do use around here. As well as, as you know, a buffalo thorn is known as a buffalo thorn, first of all, because uh, lots of times you'll find the buffaloes, if they do get attacked by lions, they've got the horns in front to defend themselves, but of course the lions will try and come from the back and what the buffalo will do, he'll actually go and put his rear end into the buffalo thorn like this. He's got his horns in front protecting himself. He's got the thorn behind him to protect his behind. And of course, it's one way of protecting that. Well, of course, the name a buffalo thorn comes from. Um, as well, as you know, it is, uh, the leaves are very palatable. You can chew on it and you can actually eat the leaves and you can actually eat the leaves and make a paste and can actually put it on like an area if you've been bitten by a snake or something to actually reduce it. But yes, buffalo thorn, one of the very important things around here that we do have. Fantastic, fantastic bush. All right. With a slew of potential dangers lurking, it's essential to be aware of your surroundings whilst walking in the wilderness. 20 yards away from one of the most endangered species. This is a big bull. What a moment, what a close encounter with an early bull. He's just over here now. He's moved completely away. Being on a bushwalk and seeing a leopard I mean, it's ridiculous to be this close to a leopard on foot and for him not to run is absolutely insane. How crazy was that? Through the gap there is just the back of the head of a male lion. He is absolutely unaware that we are here right now. I tell you, seeing lions on foot, is, it, it, it definitely brings out the caveman in you, this little scared human being. Right, we're still heading a little bit further down uh, in the easterly direction towards uh, Niola South. I think it's going to be a good place to start off with a couple of mud wallows around them. Maybe we're lucky with a buffalo or two or some elephants. But yeah, we also definitely, I'm trying to see if we can see any kind of uh, tracks for the lumber and the cubs because we haven't seen much around here yet for any of the, or any of the tracks around this area. So really, really keen for that. Yes, I see with the... Oh, there goes a uh, bronze course. Oh, it's just gone now. Let's see, can we see it there? Can we see it there? We won't get a good shot. Sorry, it's just a bronze wing course. Oh, it just flew. Okay, it's just gone. Sorry, it just flew away. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, honey badger, I'm not really a superstitious person. Uh, I think uh, I don't have anything really. I can't even think of because I'm a person that uh, yeah, runs with, uh, if it's uh, by fate, it's by fate. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, Eagle's got definitely, I think Eagle's uh, was telling me something about, uh, <laughs> about something when he went uh, scuba diving the other day. Uh, in the sea, and of course what happened is uh, him and his friend, uh, of course, uh, saw beautiful bottles lying at, at the bottom of the sea. Of course, quite old with a lot of, uh, what's it, what was on it? Barnacles. Barnacles on the bottles and all that. So they've been there for quite some time, but it was close to one of the shipwrecks. So of course they decided to maybe just leave it, but then I think Igor said, well, he felt like no, he wants to go turn around because they were quite pretty. So he turned around and they swam to the bottom and they got the bottles and of course they went to the shore and uh, of course they climbed onto one of the rocks there, took all their goggles, their flippers off and their weight belts. And of course the tide was busy moving out, so it was becoming low tide. And apparently well, Igor says that uh, he decided to just jump off the rock because they were quite far out of the water at that time. And just decided to jump off the rock and just you know, into the water again. And while they did that, uh, some freak uh, wave came through and uh, washed uh, their goggles and their flippers all into the sea, of course, leaving the weight belts uh, behind on the rock. And uh, of course, he lost his goggles 
and uh, he had to get new ones. So it just shows you. So he took something from the sea, and the sea took something from him. So, and he believes that uh, you don't remove stuff from the sea if it's not meant to be taken. So yes, I like that one. It was actually a very touching story from Igor. <laughs> but to myself, uh, any superstition I've got is uh, my, my claw. <laughs> I think it's uh, something that uh, I'm hoping it uh, brings me good luck. Um, but yeah, I don't, th I don't believe that the black cat's running across my path or under a ladder or something. I've done that many times. I've broken so many mirrors in my life and uh, it's all right. So. I think uh, Jax wants, yeah, we had to Penguin Beach with Jax and I think she wants to share some interesting stories with you. A bumbler of our own and actually a bring up good fortune. This is a Cape wagtail. And these wagtails feature in several different cultures folklore. So in this area, historically, we would have the sand people living here and beach combing and living off the land. And then we also would have the Corsa people. And for the, uh, the sand people, if you have a look at this wagtail, you'll see that on its chest, Hopefully he'll turn to face us, but you can see just from a side view, it almost looks like this wagtail has a necklace. And the sand people believe that they bestowed this necklace onto the wagtail as a gift. Because what the wagtails do is not only do they feed along the beach and eat the invertebrates here, but where people live, and he's coming towards us because there's a penguin chasing him out the way, um, so where people live, the wagtails will, will live in between the houses and eat a lot of the, the flies and a lot of the irritating invertebrates like ticks and things. And so to thank the wagtail for helping keep the house clean and free of bugs, the sand people bestowed upon the Cape wagtail a necklace on its chest to make them look pretty. The wagtail is in the folklore of, of many cultures. And I think it's because wagtails don't mind to be close to people. Most birds are a little bit shy, but wagtails have no problem walking into your house. We often see them along the, the seashore here. And where the sand people of, of this coastline were hunter-gatherers and were nomadic, the Kosa people settled and they had cattle and they had what we call a kraal, which is essentially a boma, a protected area to protect the cattle. My favorite thing about Wild Earth are the animals and the interaction and the ability to wait and watch and not rush off. You get to watch the behavior and learn about it, the individuals. I would like to see the hyenas at the hyena den, and I have. Look at that. <laughs> if I could be any animal, I would be a cheetah. I would love to run fast. Our Western Cape coastline is graced with a Cape fur seal. This playful species is curious and entertaining. At Hald Bay Seal Rescue Centre, seals in need are rescued, fed and nursed back to health by our well-trained team of dedicated staff and volunteers. This wonderful legacy of the centre is continued as these protected creatures are rehabilitated and released back into the wild. So for both the sand and the corsa, the wagtail was a good sign. The sand people, these, uh, these wagtails would clean their houses. And for the corsa people, having a wagtail around your cattle kraal meant that you would have good fortune, your cattle would do well. And cattle for the corsa people was a symbol of wealth. The more cattle you had, the more wealthy you are, the better your status in the community. Now you can see the necklace of that wagtail beautifully now. The wagtails love the shoreline and we often see many feeding along the shore. As we started the show, they all decided to abandon us. 
That is because most animals who live by the sea live according to only one law, and that is the law of Murphy. So the more you want something to happen, the less likely it is to happen. Penguins also abide by the law of Murphy. This wagtail is just enjoying these little beach hoppers. Thank you, Henry, and happy Friday 13th to you. Um, I do too. I always, I love the stories. I love the origins of the stories, trying to figure out how people got to, got to the idea of them. I think a lot of the stories come with important lessons if you dig down into them. And I think the stories also go, take us back to a time or go back to a time where people were a lot more connected with nature and we, we spent a lot more time watching. I'm very excited to see what Rex has to say. Some cultures certainly have a lot more folklore than others. I think certainly as an English South African, we don't have very much folklore. This wagtail is just having the best time with these sea slaters and these beach hoppers. You'll see that they'll wag their tails up and down, so that might distract the bugs that they are trying to capture. We have two wagtails there now. So they tend to, uh, to be in pairs. And this is the area where we will find them in the most abundance along the Cape Coast and purely just because the kelp is a breeding ground for little kelp flies, it is full of beach hoppers and sea slaters, the little bug-like creatures that they eat. If you look at the vegetation next to the, uh, the Cape Wagtail, there's not nearly as many bugs. I think it would be a lot harder to find bugs inside there. So I think if I was a wagtail, I'd also feed in the kelp, and I'd also think kelp was quite lucky because it brought me good fortune. It would bring them food. This wagtail is now deciding he is going to try for the variation of the, the June spinach and see what food it might find in there. It's just a uh, head popping out there. I don't know if it's uh, just South Africa. <laughs> so Lola is saying, happy thing, and I have to agree, that little bob just makes them look like the happiest birds, certainly at Stony Point. And I'm not sure if this is the same in other countries or if we say it in South Africa to feel better about ourselves. Um, but in South Africa, we will say that if you are in the unfortunate position to actually have a bird um, excrete on you, then people say that that's lucky, especially if it's on your head. So I don't know if whoever that's happened to decided it would be lucky because it's quite an awful thing. This wagtail is really enjoying the June spinach. So inside that June spinach, the spinach actually traps seeds and things. If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colors, a very useful tote bag, or even a cap. For those in the Southern Hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm. Head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. 
Hukamore. Oh, he is an impressive looking male leopard. Look at that neck on him. He just looks ready for a fight. This is only the third time that we are seeing him that is known as the Hukamori male, and he certainly has a lot of character and atmosphere. This is gorgeous. Hukamori having a drink at one of the little seasonal pans. Isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Compact, powerful, focused. I love it. We're going to head on off from this wagtail and uh, have a look at the ocean and see what else we might find. So the ocean is several different things that could be considered lucky. And several that are also unlucky. And so I was saying on, on Penguin Beach, we don't do a sunrise safari here. We only do Penguin Beach in the afternoons. But if ever you are at the ocean and you have a beautiful pink sunrise, it's beautiful to watch, but it's often a sign that we might actually have a storm coming in. So they made up a little riddle, a little saying of red in the morning, sailor's warning, and red at night, sailor's delight. just had some penguins join below us uh, who are making a big noise but I think we're going to head over to Rickson and see what he is doing it sounds like he's found us something exciting from Jax. Uh, I believe you are enjoying uh, uh, Penguin Beach. It's a lovely, lovely afternoon. Of course, it's a special Friday. It's a lucky day. And my vehicles uh, this afternoon have joined with my special guests here. My tree early in the morning, it just brought me a luck. Uh, we have Graham Wellington, the founder of Waldef. Hey guys. Um, it is an absolute honor and a privilege to be joining with you over here today on the Sunset Safari uh, at Juma Game Reserve. I've been here for ages and it's amazing to be here. Um, it's, uh, it's actually been 10 months since I was last down here um, and, uh, and out with my friend Rex, uh, which is a pleasure to be on a game drive. I can't even remember the last time we went on a game drive together. Um, and. Uh, I'm uh, going to be doing a fireside chat tomorrow night to the explorers, so that's why I'm down um, to get ready for that. But look what we've got here for you. We've got a little herd of elephants, including a baby. Amazing. Yeah. It is. How many are here? It looks like three. Three. Could be more. Some of them might be behind. How old is that one, Rex? Uh, I think I can rate that one between two and a half years. So that you can see with the task, yeah. a few centimeters. It's not old. It's not more than five. You... Excellent. So many of you saying hello. It's such a pleasure to be here, guys. Actually, this is actually, I think, one of the very first times I've ever been on a live safari. Um, I'm always on the other side. <laughs> so this is really, really a pleasure, a privilege. And also to immediately just come across these elephants. But now, the little young one over here, neither of these two could be the, the mother. From the mother, yes. The reason in the head itself, um, the female moves with family oriented, different uh, youngster from different mothers, of course. So, so, so you think that this is part of a, a bigger herd where they're just sort of, it's an offshoot, maybe they're somewhere nearby or just separated for a few days? Not a few days, yes, of course, when the elephant moves in the bigger picture, they really
all Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag WildEarth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Maybe if you turn around and we'll look at behind, I mean between the two legs, it will tell definitely whether, but it looked like a, he's boy. a young male, yes, yeah, yeah. young male. And how old did you say it was? Two and a half years, you said? Two and a half years down her line, still following the mother, still nursing from the mother, definitely. It always amazes me just how unbelievably distinct that spine is, you know, you can really, really see the spine of the animal sticking out. It is, yes. This is a female over here. Like this, this is the female right here. And what were you saying? It's the head shape, huh? That normally that you use to tell. The, the female is very small. At the head, it's very sharp, pointing. Uh, yes, you can see like a triangle pointing, where the male is broad and wide. Uh, you can uh, able to tell that uh, from even from the distance that it's a female or a male. A small head, of course, it's a female. They are the most amazing animals, aren't they? They're unbelievable. They really are. They're just so... There's something about them which is just so... The, the fact that they're such giants and so different looking to anything else. They really are special. Thank you, baby hyena. Yes, little saying that... Uh, that Young elephants make her happy, and all young animals. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. There's something about animals in general, obviously, but young el animals, which are just, I guess we all feel that way about, about anything that's young and cute, uh, it makes us happy. I can tell you this, though, that it is always a place of happiness when you're out with animals. That is really very, very much what I guess what Wild Earth's all about. It's giving all of us and you, usually it's me as well that's back at home, um, but that feeling of, of being in nature. Rex, now look at her ear. Look at that, look how torn that ear is on that one side there. Could Definitely. it have be from fighting or what do you think would have caused that? Mainly female, I'll say, from running through the woodland. It, it can cause that. A female, they tend to be less fighting than the males. Yeah. But if it happens that they get uh, nervous, maybe when they do uh, game counting with the helicopter, they don't like that. Of course. Of yes. Course. They force themselves into the thick bushes, rush through, and then through the woodland, maybe pocked, and it yeah. can have that uh, turn. Absolutely. Yeah. That's quite a big tear, that, hey? Yeah. And that'll never heal, hey? That's, that's it for that's life, it. that will be like that. And it's easy for us here at World Dev to identify this individual. Of course. To yeah. get that. And let's take this opportunity linking back to Cedric, who is uh, trying to find his luck. Yes, well, as you know, it is superstitious day, lucky and unlucky. And I thought to myself, I have to do my leopard dance. A leopard claw is in my pocket, but I have to give it a little bit more. I think it is really getting now to that serious point. So I think oh, get the, you have to get the, that leaves shaking. So get that shaking. Where is that leopard? Ooh, and you know, slowly but surely. And so now, of course, you start thinking about things and where is that leopard? And it starts talking to you, the bush. It just starts talking to you. And I think that's the main thing. And what I'm wearing here is a magic quarry. So as you can see, it's all these beautiful evergreen bushes that we've got around here. That's why they call it a magic quarry. Hopefully it's got some magic for me and for my leopard dance and for all the viewers out there that we can find 
a leopard for you today. But yes, I am on Niala South and I'm just hoping that this bush, my claw and everything is going to bring us some good, good luck. And as you know with the Magic Quarry as well, that the local people, they do use, use this, of course, uh, to keep their cattle all safe at the crawl. Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches, and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari, where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions, or could they be true? Join us to find out. Look at that, look at that, there's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy, we just came around the corner. That is incredible, that's probably his first solo kill. Oh, that is wonderful. Oh, and have a look, here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. And look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. Yes, we shall continue down Niala South. Everything, the wind is pushing me that side. The magic quarry, the claw, everything is pushing me into this direction. I think these are lucky charms for me today. And I've got a feeling that Friday the 13th is going to bring me some luck here for the afternoon. But as everybody knows, tomorrow evening on our fireside chat after our sunset drive, we are definitely going to join uh, Graham Wellington. Yeah, Graham Wellington will be joining on Fireside Chat explaining, of course, uh, what's happening with Wild Earth. But yes, thank you Shaggy Dog for joining us this afternoon on the special lucky and unlucky day here at Wild Earth, which is fantastic. Thank you very much. I do look uh, very shabby. I don't know. I think I'm starting to enjoy these uh, Quarry dresses, they're quite interesting. It almost reminds me of those Hawaii, those Hawaii things, or like a, maybe even a Scottish kilt. <laughs> this will be like the South African version. But yes, I've got a feeling we are gonna find something. As I said, we're gonna really scan, especially once it starts cooling down. If it starts cooling down, we'll be, very, I've got a feeling we'll be lucky. <laughs> Michael Fleetwood, <laughs> thank you for joining us uh, as always. Um, yeah, and I think that the Lumban comes, if they did see me now or if they were, were viewing me now, I think uh, they would be uh, running for their dear lives. <laughs> uh, I was actually hoping it was going to be different, but you never know. Like I said, it's, uh, hopefully the day does cool down a bit and we can actually. Uh, uh, start uh, looking for more tracks around. But yes, uh, I'm glad old Rexon and uh, Graham is with old Rexon. So absolutely fantastic. What an afternoon. And they've got some nice elephants and all that. So that's a good start. Always a good start. And as well, Osana, the male leopard, make sure that you send your videos, please. All your favorite clips of Osana to Final Control at wildearth.tv. Make sure that those uh, videos, are on the, just mention there, it's the sunset or the sunrise drive, and uh, got a date, uh, date uh, stamp on them. And uh, yes, and then of course, uh, Hopefully, I'm sure we will be showing all those videos at the Fireside Chat on the 22nd of May. Of course, being hosted by uh, Tristan. So he will be hosting that show for that chat, which is brilliant. Good to have old Tristan in the area again. All right, so coming down here, I know sometimes this drainage down, this Mulawati, I know that uh, Tlalamba likes to use this because um, Rex and said there was a lot of uh, elephant audio just south of us. So I'm just uh, going to take a look carefully. I know sometimes she uses this little drainage you know, line here just to lie in because it is nice and cool. You never know. Just double check. I'm going to try and look at every nook and cranny around here at this point in time and see if we are lucky. 
with a but yes, of course, we are going to definitely head off to the hyena den later. Once it starts cooling down, I think the hyena den will be uh, on the cards for this afternoon. I think it's just a little bit warm at this point in time, just slightly, slightly warm. I don't see any tracks coming into the drainage line here. No. Fortunately, no, I don't see any tracks that side. <laughs> Yes, I must probably a lot of you think I'm crazy, but uh, yes, we've got to have fun in the bush. It's always, uh, I just believe it's uh, always have to be have an open spirit, and uh, it's always nice just to nice to just to have a little bit of fun. But yes, we shall go on. to eat, get their fill in there as well, but they're also going to be told off. See, it's, lions are not great at sharing their food. Okay, guys, we're just taking frustration out on the other lion, but you see, it was interesting. In the woodlands of Juma lives a lion pride with a taste for buffalo. Look, 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 this is insane. Now, this is what I was saying about lions and buffalo. It's absolute pandemonium. Wild Earth have been privileged to follow the Nkuhuma pride for many years. One of the most loved cats in the pride is Amber Eyes. She was not successful in rearing her first two litter of cubs and was seen as an aunt to the other youngsters. Then eventually, towards the end of August 2019, we found her with four tiny cubs of her own. Sorry. All right, so we had spaghetti crossing. Gonna go further, a little bit further south. We're gonna take a look. Do a little bit of dam, uh, dam hopping. So I think Twin Dams, Treehouse Dam, and then I think from Treehouse Dam might head towards. Uh, depends on how hot it is. Head towards the Hina Den uh, from there. But uh, no, the Hina Den hasn't been active for the last uh, since, since yesterday and today. Since there was a lot of activity yesterday morning, all around, around Vuyatela Access. And I think a lot of the hyenas didn't go south, but they went more west towards uh, Simambili, maybe to Arethusa uh, property. A little bit went further west. Well, uh, yeah, let's head back uh, to Penguin Beach with Jax. She's watching some beautiful cormorants on the rocks, and I think she wants to say goodbye to everybody. that uh, Cedric's leopard dance is going to get him some leopard luck. We are looking at birds that are actually also bringers of luck to fishermen, or so they used to believe. So we are looking at the endangered bank cormorants of Cormorant Cove. And with the bank cormorants, they get the name bank cormorant because the fishermen used to believe that if they had to see them out fishing, that they would find good fishing banks and catch a lot of fish. So the bank cormorant actually really enjoys eating things like lobster, although they do eat some fish like clipfish, which is a very slow moving fish and not one that humans really eat. It was good enough to stick. Very strangely, your bank cormorants don't really go very far out to see it all. They usually feed in the kelp forests. So perhaps they were talking about other fish. Sometimes cob will come into the kelp forests here and the bank cormorants that happen to be in that same area. So I think when it comes to luck, it's all about what we choose to believe and if we think it's a sign. And sometimes there are signs that are indicative that we might get lucky. If you're a fisherman and you see lots of birds out at sea, it might mean there's lots of fish. These bank cormorants are all nesting. And you'll see them leaving and coming back. And most often it's because they're getting nesting material to add 
to the nest. They do, do that throughout the season. See, like, that's a really interesting question. Um, not in the way that you would see in the bush. It's not like you would have several different sort of grass eating or seed eating birds hanging out together. Um, we do get to see sort of an oceanic equivalent. So I find certain oceanic birds you'll see feed together quite a lot. Um, so you'll often have a group and we have seen it on the show where you'll have um, Cape Cormorants, you'll have Swift Terns and you'll have um, sometimes African penguins feeding in a group like that. Um, sometimes you'll have kelp gulls and cape cormorants feeding together. I find heartlups gulls sometimes with swift turns and uh, not so much with the cape cormorants. It's not, none of that is scientifically proven. It's, it's just things that I've noticed out at sea. So you will have uh, feeding associations. Um, but it's not quite the same as what you have in the bush where you just have a very nice chattery party of birds hanging out together. Um, often when seabirds interact with each other, they're not being very kind to each other. Um, their interpersonal skills are not that great. And most often when you have different seabirds hanging out, one is either stealing from the other or they are shouting at the other one to give it space. That's a really interesting question. Um, even behind us, you know, we, we have um, just normal vegetation behind us. And even so, we don't often see what you would call a bird party about. Now you can see we do have a, oh, a cormorant that chased a kelp gull off its perch. That's really interesting. Kelp gulls tend to like to rule the roost. They steal the eggs of other birds. They attack other birds for, for food. And uh, we'll always see kelp gulls sitting on the periphery and gulls in general, where you have breeding colonies of other animals. Um, the gulls will sit on the periphery and they're always watching for something, often the dead or the dying. So Zealo, the waves are incredible here. So we are the Cape of Storms. And the highest swell that I've seen since I've been working in the Cape is an 11 meter swell. So today it's about three meters, three or four. So it's not all, all that large compared to 11, although this is still super powerful and super impressive. And we have a lot of ghost stories because of these waves. With large waves and lots of rocks along the Cape coastline, we have hundreds of shipwrecks and My name is Tessa, I studied animals and insects and I specialised in African vertebrate biodiversity. But first and foremost, I am a naturalist here at Wild Earth. What inspired me to become a naturalist was a combination of a childhood love and passion for wildlife from our family holidays. It just became this amazing passion and it ignited this fire that just would not go away. To me, the skills that a naturalist should have would be that passion, making sure that you know why you've got that passion and keeping it going no matter what. The determination to never give up because it's not the easiest place to be, but I can tell you in my experience, it's the best place to be with the biggest differences that you can make. If I could be any animal, I think I would be a leopard. To me, they're the perfect combination of elegance and power and determination and independence and yet, just so beautiful. So I think we'll just have a, a look at these waves that are crashing onto the point there at, uh, at the edge. This water here is very shallow and Whenever you see a wave break, that is a sign that there is a rocky reef system below. But at night or in times of storm, if you have a lot of uh, have a lot of wave action, you don't often see how shallow it is, which made the coast treacherous and is responsible for so many of the shipwreck stories that we have. 
but I think that we're going to leave those for another day and send you guys back to go see the, the leopards and all the other animals out in Juma and Pridelands. But on behalf of myself and Jason, thank you so much um, for, for watching today's show. We hope that you've learned a lot. We hope that you have uh, found out a little bit about some of the superstitions and the folklore of the South African coast. And enjoy the rest of your time with Safari and we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much. So we're just gonna go see what Chris is doing in Pridelands. Well, I'll tell you one thing, on a hot day like this, I wouldn't mind to have a dip in the ocean. I do miss the ocean a lot. It is unusually hot uh, at Pridelands this, for this time of year. Um, not really very good walking conditions from a temperature perspective, very little wind, so we're just driving around a bit in the area where the report of the leopards was this morning, sorry, and we are hoping that to find some more tracks just to point us in the direction, hopefully at one of these copies we can find something. really pressing it's like a, it's not humid but it's it's like dead hot air <coughs> so now we're just doing our own little bundles that's something we do often we prefer to be out on foot but I like to mix and match it up yeah. give a bit of best of all worlds my favorite thing about Wild Earth are the animals and the interaction and the ability to wait and watch and not rush off. You get to watch their behavior and learn about it. the individuals. I would like to see the hyenas at the hyena den, and I have. There they are. Look at that. <laughs> if I could be any animal, I would be a cheetah. I would love to run fast. Our Western Cape coastline is graced with a Cape fur seal. This playful species is curious and entertaining. At Hout Bay Seal Rescue Center, seals in need are rescued, fed and nursed back to health by our well-trained team of dedicated staff and volunteers. This wonderful legacy of the center is continued as these protected creatures are rehabilitated and released back into the wild. Uh, it is close to Leopard Dam, and we know there's often some movement there. Oh, some buffalo tracks, yeah? But it's not fresh. I've seen some nice buffalo. Oh, am I right? Some nice buffalo yesterday. I'm not going to try and track buffalo. Find a nice little area, walk around a bit. in that area where the leopard was seen. Maybe we might have a distant view, you never know. But if we don't find a leopard, not to worry. It's about being out here and about enjoying the bush for what it is. Well, maybe Rexon might have a bit more luck than I have. Let's go and see what he's tracking. from uh, Cedric. We are now Gwari Central. Very exciting here. We have tracks look like uh, Kalamba heading more to our left. We're going to Tech Central up to Cheetah Kantlan. It's where we might uh, think the leopard might be going in that direction. But it'll be good for me checking up in the trees on top of the termite before getting into that area. Be. You guys cannot believe, when you're just being over there, 
Rick spots these tracks as we're going along and uh, can tell that, that, they, that Columbo was walking past her at 10 o'clock this morning um, and immediately figures out where she's going. I mean, this is the leopard tracker here, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Leopard himself on Friday the 13th. We're going to be lucky, eh, Rex? Very lucky. Yeah, uh, I be. believe now I'm so much confident because now I can get the tracks. Even it's 10 o'clock uh, late this morning, at least I know the direction where she's going. She probably would have laid up for most of the day, though. She wouldn't have carried on walking. I mean, she would have been lying down probably until now, eh? Or... Of course. Um, it depends. Sometimes she will be still lying down. Oh, so. oh, oh, oh. Is there something here? Just in front of the left wheel here. There. Is that a track? Yes. It's a track. Hyena. Let's go further up. The way she's moving, I'm sure from 150 meters, she'll cross this road or oh, heading up towards Cheetah Cut Line. While we're doing this, guys, I want you to... Uh, who is my favorite leopard? Um, from Benjamin. Benjamin asking who my favorite leopard is. So, I got two favorite leopards. And, uh, and, and the first is Karula, who is not with us anymore. Um, she was the queen of Juma. And uh, I knew Karula's mother, Safari. In fact, I remember, I remember with Rex going out and tracking and filming Safari many, many years ago. Safari had a big kind of, she damaged her eye somehow in a fight or something. And she had this big kind of purple swollen eye that, uh, that she had. And her daughter was Karula. And we watched Karula on Wild Earth go through, I, I can't even remember how many sets of, of cubs. She was an amazing mother. Um, and, and, and really, uh, uh, she would come into our camp uh, and roll on the washing. Uh, she was a part of the family. And, um, and I really, I think Karula was the first leopard that, that I really felt I got to know and, and, and follow properly. And, uh, and it was very sad when she went. And then, of course, the other leopard, who, if I, I'm uncomfortable saying this, but I think I liked him even more than his mother, and that was Hosanna. Um, and Hosanna, uh, you know, was a very, 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 very special cat so that means a lot to a lot of us. Um, and, uh, and unfortunately, as you know, he died recently in an unfortunate incident um, where he was unfortunately shot by an anti-poaching unit on patrol um, in, in self-defense. And it is just absolutely, I mean, uh, it's, well, it's actually beyond words um, how, how upsetting it is to have lost Asana. I mean, he, he left us over here. Oh, that's a young, that's a, what's that? Uh, bandit, sun grass. But that, right. behaving strangely, Rex. Strange. It looked like a young male. Yeah, it looked like it was a youngster that couldn't fly properly or something. It's just, can you see it there? If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colours, a very useful tote bag or even a cap. For those in the southern hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm. Head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. I'm not going to come too close because I know you've got your babies. And hello you old friend. Isn't she spectacular? Oh look, it's just too special. She's such a fantastic mother. Look at that, isn't that incredible? I think I think the the, the 
the, what, what, what really is amazing about Hosanna, for those of you, I mean, many of you who are watching obviously knew him well and know the story that I'm about to tell well, but, but I think for, 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 for those who don't know him, I think what really made Hosanna special was that he, he, his mother, Karula, uh, disappeared. And, and that's usually how leopards go when the time comes. You don't know exactly what happens to them. They, they just go. Um, and, uh, and, and he lost his mother, uh, him and his sister Shongile, um, they lost his, he lost his mother when I think he was about a year old. And that's quite young for a leopard. It's not old enough to, to be out there on your own yet. Usually the, a male leopard will disperse, leave his, his natal territory, his mother's territory, um, when they're about 18 months to, to two, to even two and a half years old in some cases. Um, there's no exact, obviously, there's no exact time. Um, but it was, it was too young. It was too young for him to have, have lost his mother. He hadn't yet developed the skills to be able to hunt properly. Um, and, you know, him and his sister had to really scratch a living. Um, you know, they would often live on terrapins because they could catch them in puddles and, you know, the dams um, because they were desperate, they were starving. Um, and, uh, and, and we, our vehicles and the team here uh, at Juma, would, would see him often and um, spend hours each day with him and his sister. Um, and he got really habituated and, and comfortable with the vehicles. Uh, and I think, and I think, and I, I'm going to start heading off into crazy territory here. So for those of you that, you know, I think I'm a bit out of my mind here. But I think that in a way, we, Wild Earth, not just our vehicles and our crew, but all of the sort of emotional support that came from viewers like yourselves all around the world kind of became the two of their mother or you know, not mother, not parents, but the sort of the people that were looking out for him. And, um, and, and I think that that what is what bonded us so, so much with him. And uh, you, see, you see a track? She's heading out. Uh, oh, she's going to go yeah, I mean, where I pointed out in Kamat somewhere here, and head out to Torchwood. Oh, she's on Torchwood. The Cubs? Where are you hiding the Cubs, Rex? Eh? Well, well let's see you've got them hidden away somewhere. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> let's see down in the way, maybe we might see the direction of the Cubs where she might have left them. But she was coming from your side, you can see. Let me yeah. read it. You can see tracks there. Is that a hyena? Or? Uh, yeah, hyena. Uh, definitely she came out a uh, little bit ahead. All Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag WildEarth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions or could they be true? Join us to find out. Rex, how sure are you that those tracks earlier that we saw were from about 10 o'clock? Could they have been from earlier in the day, so that during the, during the cooler part of the day she walked all the way around into Torchwood and then came, came back, or do you really think they were late morning? Yeah, I've been in this road, ah, so, so okay. I know. Okay. It looks like uh, she's been here also. Let me see, show you, Graham, if you can come down, it can tell you. Yeah, the exactly. light's nice, you can see that then, eh? Yeah, yes, it tracks. She was coming from Gwari Central. So she spent more time in this area. While we're looking for her from the other side, she came in here. I don't know whether only can see that. These are the, the, the cups here. The cups, they're going straight east. How fresh is that? This is today, early, early in the morning, around, uh, for instance, let me say, around 10 also, 
She may come with the cops from somewhere here in this block, I suspect. Yeah. She left the cops, come down there and turn back. The cops is not on Cheetah Cut Line, which means the cops are somewhere here. So if we can work this road here, yeah, yeah, yeah. we might be lucky. She came with the cops all the way down from this water hall and head straight to the east. So they probably drank here this yes, morning. this morning. Wow, I would love to see those cops. I would love to see those cars. There's a nice training plant here, eh? Yeah, finally, you might find that... Uh... Let's take this opportunity and linking uh, to Cedric, which is having something good for us. Look at this beautiful, beautiful eagle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this one to you. I reckon we need to ask the audience. <laughs> right, tell us, what raptor or eagle do you think this is? What do you think? Now, eagles in many African cultures have a lot of superstition amongst them, particularly the eggs. If you can find an eagle's egg, it's considered very strong good luck. Obviously the way they nest, it's difficult to find them. But also you need to be careful if you do break it, you will have seven years of bad luck. So it's that trade-off. Should I climb up there and get an egg for luck, risk breaking it? and curse myself with seven years. Personally, I'll just let them be. So all the other less intrusive ways of getting stuff of good luck. So if we look at some pointers on this, and this is a bit of a curveball, because it still doesn't look like the adult version. So there's a clue, very upright, Big, flat, broad head. And in fact, the Afrikaans viewers will possibly take a bit of a hint in the flat, broad head, because it's reflected in its Afrikaans name. And this is a juvenile or an immature one. It's still not an adult, fully grown adult, although it's already big. And very characteristic is that flat it looks like a tabletop cut and we've got answer coming through from white main who says it is a martial eagle yes correct it is it is a juvenile or immature so the wing coloration's already developed it's got really got the white on the chest eventually it will start developing that brownish sort of head Massive eagle, the largest in this area, as we are unlikely to find crowned eagles here, as they are more forest eagles, very short, very broad wings to navigate through forests, prey almost exclusively on monkeys. But this is the largest of the eagles we have mainly out here, one of my favorites. So what I refer to, with the broad flat head in Afrikaans, it's a Bria Kop Arend, which translates to a broad headed eagle. So there was a hint for some of our local viewers. The fact that it's an immature one doesn't mean they can hunt, hunt. very effective already. <clears throat> Even now, look at that, look at that, there's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy, we just came around the corner. That is incredible, that's probably his first solo kill. Oh, that is wonderful. 
I never look here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. Yeah, look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. My heart rate has gone up slightly. In fact, it's gone up quite a lot. This elephant is now two meters from us. Okay, we might have to move here. No? Yes. Sorry, my friend, but you're about to push that onto the car. You see how cross he was that we didn't want to watch him push the tree over. That's why we moved. <laughs> I've also seen a number of cases where his eagles have been feeding on baby impalas they've caught. I've seen them with big monitor lizards. So they're not shy to take large prey. I've heard about cases on farms out where I'm from where even some people's small dogs were taken by them. Mariah, hi there. Mariah's just commenting on this majestic looking juvenile. So like I said, even at this age, already have that aura around them, eh? I think this is a lucky charm, don't you think? Because it's not an eagle that we see often. They don't occur in high density, so they're not seen every day. I think this is a very, very lucky sighting. Must be. take one last look at this beautiful eagle and while you do that directly after that we'll send you over to Cedric who's made his way to a water hole Marshall Eagle that is definitely a lucky find well done Chris Definitely, I'm sure you did the Marshall Eagle dance or something, but yes, I'm so happy that you got such a majestic uh, species of bird of prey. It's such, so, so beautiful. But yeah, we've got something else that's really majestic here yeah, in uh, Treehouse Dam. We've got, of course, a nice big male hippo bull. And he's loving, now and again, he's been showing us his teeth. He's also been yawning and uh, been, he's been entertaining us a little bit this side. So we're just going to take a look at him while he's lying in the water on quite a warm day today. So I don't think he's going to have any time, or well, he's not going to come out anytime soon. I think he's still going to enjoy a little bit of uh, activity in his little water hole. Uh, but of course, this guy is pretty much a retired male, retired boy, so he hasn't got his pod of females. Come on, open your mouth for us. Show us your teeth. Oh, okay, now he's, he's, now he's embarrassed. Now he's really embarrassed. Come on. But he's just been up and down, blowing bubbles and loving uh, this watering hole this afternoon. I think because it is around about, I think it's about 31, 32 degrees Celsius, the way it does feel at this point of time. It is, uh, it is quite warm in the sun. But I think he's uh, just making sure that he's keeping his skin nice and wet. He doesn't want to have uh, any problems, of course, with a dry skin that will start cracking if he doesn't keep it wet. And unfortunately, when it does happen like that and they don't get to a watering hole on a hot day like this, it could end up uh, a little kind of fatal for them because uh, they could actually start, uh, their skin starts breaking up and uh, well, because you start using uh, a liquid and also sometimes a lot of blood will come out as well and they'll find that these hippos then will dehydrate very quickly. So yes, very important to come around to these water holes on such a hot day. Jesus, come on. Polly, good afternoon. Welcome. Thanks for joining us on now Friday the 13th, Unlucky and Lucky Safari. Uh, yes, definitely this hippo has got a wonderful idea. 
think, the perfect idea. I think it's an idea that I wish I could go and uh, join him here in the waterhole, but uh, unfortunately, Igor just hold me, held me back here now. So, <laughs> no, there's a definitely there's no way I'll go and join this heap. I think that'll be my last swim. It'll be, a, a, it'll be the unlucky swim. So, yeah, and I've got a little terrapin as well that's enjoying and basking in the sun. Well, it's actually quite funny just now, this... Uh, Terrapin that uh, we're seeing now. I was actually sitting on top of the hippo's back and he was loving life on the hippo's back and then all of a sudden all this male hippo decided to become quite active and uh, oh, the poor Terrapin had to make a, a drastic uh, plan and move and uh, get off that hippo's back before he got in a bit of trouble and of course he swam to the side there. So. Oh, I'm glad he's all safe and sound there. He's definitely had a lucky day. Lucky escape. Tingana has been affectionately known as the Duke of Juma for many years, but his path to the throne was not an easy one. Mvula was a legend from the south. This is the cat that I'm pretty sure Tingana was sniffing around for. That is Mvula. How exciting is this? Eventually, Mvula lost, but his young son, Quarantine, started to push through from the east. At the beginning of 2018, an intruder arrived. His name was Hukumuri. Have been, oh, the hippo's coming. Well, maybe he's going to open his mouth for us now. Come on, boy. Come on, he's coming up. I see you doing that with his tail, shaking it around a bit. Just showing his dominance. There he goes. Boom, 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 boom. Wu flung dung. And of course, that's what the. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do agree with you. I definitely do agree with you. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Yes, definitely. He's laughing at me, thinking, yeah, come, Siri, come and join me in this uh, water hole. <laughs> it would be your last uh, little uh, swim. But as you can see, definitely with that uh, flinging dung like that, very good, very important as well. So when he flings dung into the water, it brings, of course, a lot of uh, nitrogen to the water. And, of course, there's a lot of uh, food sources for certain fish as well. So you'll find something like your terrapins, <clears throat> Ryan, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here on our Sunset Safari on the beautiful, lucky and unlucky day. Do hippos have sensitive skin? Yes, uh, uh, epidermis is very, very, uh, very sensitive. Um, you'll find that uh, it's, that's why they have to keep it kind of uh, wet all the time. It is kind of uh, very prone to getting uh, injured or actually, how can I say, um, saw with uh, the sun, with the elements. Oh, look at that. Look at those teeth. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Desi. Thank you very much. And also, funny enough, you'll find that a lot of hippo, especially that uh, hangs around the big riverine areas, they will eat a lot of uh, uh, sausage tree fruit. So the sausage tree fruit does give them a certain kind of uh, nutrients um, that will actually kind of help them with uh, very uh, hot days and with their sensitive skin. So they do eat on the sausage tree fruit. Uh, that's right, Amal. I think he's very happy that he's on uh, TV. That's why he was definitely giving him, uh, sh he's giving himself a shout out there. <laughs> but it's very interesting. I also looked around here. There is those, remember those blacksmith lap wings? Oh, wait, I'm not opening his mouth again. Just before. Yeah, wait, wait. There we go. Hello. Mm. 
is absolutely ginormous teeth. <laughs> but uh, yeah, oh, fantastic. Well, we are just sitting here. There is those two lap rings, those little blacksmith lap rings. I did take a look around here. They are absolutely, both of them are still alive. I did see both of them now right in the inflow, but I don't see them now. Oh, oh, not right now, but earlier I did see them at the inflow. I just want to quickly do a bit of a scan. Okay, I see one. I think the second one is a little bit further behind. It's very difficult to see them. It looks like the one is really kind of uh, nestled there on the, on the inflow, but yeah, kind of tucked away at this point of time. But yes, as I say, I'm going to definitely head towards uh, Ahina Den uh, not too long from now. I think I'm just going to wait for another couple of minutes and let it cool down a bit. Lynn, good afternoon. Uh, uh, welcome to our scary Friday the 13th sunset safari. Uh, do I have any scary stories about hippos? Lynn, indeed I do. Um, I used to stay in a place called Marloth Park. And uh, many years ago, many, many years ago, my older brother and myself, my older brother was also a guide. And uh, this is when I was a guide, uh, when I just started guiding. So this was a good, maybe 10 to 15 years ago. I can't remember exactly. And uh, yes, we used to go towards the Crocodile River. And of course, uh, at the Crocodile River, we used to go, of course, do a little bit of fishing along the, the river areas for like tiger fish and all tilapias and catfish. We did a lot of fishing that side, and the one day, my brother and myself, we kind of made sure there was a gully behind us. A little like a narrow gully. So we went to go and fish, we were on the side of the river busy fishing, and next moment, out of nowhere, we had this one huge male hippo, almost the same size as this boy here now. All of a sudden came uh, charging out. We didn't, out of not nowhere, he came charging out, and uh, we just saw this huge wake, like this wave in front, and... Uh, of course, we checked it, we threw our rods down, our fishing rods down, and we ran. Oh, look at that, he is even agreeing with me. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you want to mess with us. And of course, my brother and myself threw our rods down, and we ran straight towards the gully with this hippo on our yields. And uh, we got into the gully. Luckily, the gully is just narrow enough for us to go into and get into where, of course, the Moloth Park, that reserve was. And uh, the hippo stopped at the entrance of that gully, turned around and ran back into the water, practically running over our fishing rods as well. So, yes, uh, it was a very close call um, for us. And after that day, we always made sure when we went fishing that uh, if we do see any signs of hippos, we know where, where they are and what the activity is and uh, just to be safe. And uh, so, yes, hippos are very protective over the water areas. And definitely we did learn in a very kind of, I can say, a scary way. So, yeah, so it's one of those ways that we don't want to experience again. Hmm. Well, this guy is definitely giving us a good old show with his, uh, his yawning and his big teeth. That's really kind of uh, displaying quite a bit here for us. But yeah, no, look, the thing is, I saw the hippos, you know, and that's why hippos have killed m m most people out of all animals. This morning we were driving and suddenly we heard a lot of commotion. I think the wild dogs might have caught an impala then, or the leopard might have caught the impala, and as it was dragging it, the wild dog saw it, started chasing the leopard up into the tree, and then the hyenas came to steal it. But, uh, what an incredible sighting. With the traditional stories I've learned that uh, it does have future and a past. If you follow it, you will never ever go wrong in life. It's very important because it contains, of course, the history background and the knowledge of the bush. In each and every family, they have so called a tree or Amar ruler tree will go there and kneel down and talk to the tree and say, Do we want success in the family? 
But yes, once again, as everybody knows, for all the explorers, I'll just quickly mention again that the fireside chat for tomorrow night after our sunset drive. Please join us as, uh, as Graham Wellington will be on the fireside chat and he will be explaining exactly everything about uh, wild earth and what is up and coming. So please join us. And of course, everybody as well for Osana as well. Make sure that if you've got any special videos, uh, video clips of a sunset drive or a sunrise drive, please make sure that you send them in to final control at wildearth.tv. And uh, just make sure that you put your date stamps on them or your time stamps just to, so we can at least know when that was taken. And... Um, and, uh, of course, uh, on the 22nd of May, that will be shown then on the fireside chat. All right, we're going to head back to Rexton and Graham while they are sitting at Gowrie Dam. Let me see what they've got there. Welcome back from Cedric from Cheetah Cheetah Dam. We are here at Gary Dam. Such a beautiful light for the afternoon. And of course, Cedric was uh, reminding viewers about the fast side chat that Graham's going to do. I have Graham here uh, this afternoon in the vehicle. You're able to tell us more about. Hey guys, back again. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you also our new Wild Earth merchandise. You can go to the shop uh, at wildearth.tv and you can see our new merchandise. Emily made sure that I mention this before I finish off. Um, I'm going to leave uh, Rex now um, for the rest of the, the rest of the safari, and uh, I'm going to go on a safari with um, with our new investor that's invested into Wild Earth. I've come down with him, and uh, but what I also wanted to do was to say that tomorrow night I'm going to be doing a fireside chat for the explorers. Uh, if you're an explorer, you'll be able to um, watch the fireside chat. I'm going to be talking a bit about what's coming up, what we're working on, uh, what's going on with Wild Earth. Um, if you're not an explorer, please become an explorer. Please sign up to become an explorer. What makes it possible for us to keep delivering these safaris for free to everybody around the world is the support that we get from the explorers. So we really, really rely on um, the explorers. So please, um, if, if, you, if, you, if you can, um, it would be very grateful if you could uh, join me at the fireside tomorrow night. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the time is. Um, I think it'll be short. You think I would know, uh, but I don't. Uh, it's shortly after the, um, after the, the sunset safari. So thank you very much for your time. It was great being on safari with you all um, and uh, enjoy the rest of it. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you very much. All right, let's head on and check uh, on the western side of quarantine. Maybe we might be lucky. There's a quite a lot of activity around the waterhole quarantine itself. Maybe breeding heart of elephant, who knows? There is a bit of elephant around, hey? We saw those ones earlier, and then we saw some others just while we were driving over here. Um, while you guys were with Cedric, and uh, there's kind of an elephant around, which is great. And I must say, the dam is looking good, hey? Lots of water, which is after a good, after a good wet season. Ribbon is the matriarch and has recently been seen with injuries to her body. Corky was the previous matriarch and is believed to be taken back her status. Intima was born to Ribbon in February 2017 and also enjoys a high ranking. Hart is the next rank down and in June is believed to be the lowest rank, easily recognizable by a floppy left ear. Three brothers, named the Avoca males, arrived in Juma in 2018. This area had recently been vacated by the Birmingham boys. In 2019, they were seen mating with females from both prides and went on to sire cubs with them. The most recognizable lion in this coalition is Darkmane. 
Aside from the dark mane that gave him his name, he can be recognized by a distinctive limp. And this, isn't that a... Can I just spot it, uh, a tree pendant uh, chakra, which is more towards the left. We still have the squirrel in shot, but amazing. All these... Yeah. Uh, There's a dronga. Yes. You see the dronga here, bro? Look at that. Now, that's, a, that's an interesting bird, eh? Hey? And look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show you my, my twitching skills. Is that a prinia that I see bouncing around with the tail that flicks up? It's Look like uh, sesticolas, you can hear them calling. Oh, okay. So, you see, I don't actually think, I think I know more than... And there's a lilac-breasted roller. Wow, it's bird central, huh? Eh? Do you think they could be like insects There's a question something? from Bert on uh, classroom. This is uh, really get more excited. Who is in the vehicle? <laughs> So, uh, my name is Graham Wallington, and I am the co-founder. My wife, Emily, and I founded um, Wild Earth back on the... We started on the 27th of April, um, and 2007. And uh, it is very, very rare that I'm on this vehicle. In fact, uh, it's, it, it basically never happens. But I'm down here at Juma. Um, I'm visiting, um, and I am uh, going to be doing a fireside chat tomorrow night. And so I thought I'd just jump on the vehicle for a bit and uh, join my old friend Rex and uh, go bumbling around. <laughs> Indeed. Let's carry on, guys. So uh, see, <clears throat> maybe we might uh, return back where we have seen Kalamba tracks before the sun goes down. Wow. It's very active here, all this tree squirrel. Oh, there's something going on. <laughs> But the tree squirrels will not eat insects, so... Let's take this opportunity and link back to Cedric, who is bumbling. Maybe he might be lucky with Kalamba. <laughs> nice. I love old tree squirrels when they're so active. They got such... such cute little things. <laughs> Oh, but anyway, yes, I did go down the road to the hyena den. The hyena den is uh, very much uh, not active. There is nothing there. Nobody's home. Uh, the lights have been turned off there. So I think and the doors are shut. So nobody's home at, at, uh, at those den sites at this point in time. I wonder where those hyenas are for the last two days. And definitely must be on something, on, uh, something very interesting around. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, that's very, very interesting point that it's a nice little pea soup that we're passing by here. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try, I think I'm also heading further to the east. You. In that tree are two carcasses. There's a diker carcass and a water buck. Oh, it's not as graceful as <laughs> He's a bit hesitant because, well, climbing a tree is not the easiest, but he will get up there eventually. So, let's see. There he goes. Look at the power in that. That is a massive 500-pound cat that has just climbed a marula tree and is up in there. How cool is this? I don't know how he's going to do it, but let's see. See, the hyenas are far more tolerant of vultures than a lion or leopard would be. Occasionally a hyena will bite sort of a couple of tail feathers out of the back of a vulture, but I've never actually seen them, even once they've caught one, um, actually kill it. Oh, there we go, nearly got him. All right, well, I've just stopped here now, as you can see, and why I've done this is because there is a beautiful track. Now, who'd, what do you think made this big track over here? And I mean, this could be something big, something small, could be dragging, maybe a leopard dragging something, maybe a hyena dragging something, maybe a snake. Not too sure, eh? But look careful enough at this big track, you'll understand that, first of all, if I go down towards the side here, it's very wet. It's 
very, very wet. And this wetness is actually from the must of a male elephant. All right, so he's got a very pungent smell here. And you can see he's been dribbling urine. Yes, don't worry, I will wash my hands after this in, uh, in one of the little wallows. But uh, yes, so you can see he walked down here and he dragged his trunk all along. So typical big male elephant. You can even see the foot of the male here. The very big foot coming all the way around. All the way around. Big foot, eh? That's now that's the size of a male's front foot and a back foot, of course, landing on top of it. The direction of this is pretty much heading into that way. So they are heading to that side. All right. And what a male does when he's got uh, he's in must. So what he'll do, he'll walk with his trunk like that, swaying, and he's got like that. And when he sways like that, that's exactly what makes this typical snake mark all along here. And of course, hitting that side. So there is a male that was in must and he did move this way. Pretty much a big boy. As well, I just want to show you another way of telling the direction. If you actually look at the foot mark here now, you'll see the indentation on the front of it there. It's like a little indentation. So of course, what happens when a male walks, he'll walk and he does that and he'll leave that indentation on the front side of the foot. So you can always tell the direction of an elephant. All right, very fresh maybe this, uh, during today, this afternoon. As I say, you can pick up a little bit of the smell and uh, as you can just see by there's nothing really on top of it. Fantastic. Let's see, maybe it might be cello pan is that side. So it might be a cello pan. Let's go and take a look. Let's see if we can find him that way. Frana. <laughs> Good afternoon. Sana. Frana, Sana. <laughs> A worm slung track. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could always say it looked difficult, like the snake, uh, you know, slithering away. You know, it's got the typical S, S mark. This uh, it looks like the snake has been moving away from there. But uh, yeah. Fortunately, it's very big. It was very, very big. So, yeah, big old elephant. Elephant trunk. Oops. Sorry about that. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. I'm still heading in an easterly direction. As I said, I am going towards Chilapan. See what's happening at Chilapan, and then from there, I'll maybe try and get to Chila Cut Line and. Uh, work around that area but because I know my lips yesterday morning crossed over no yesterday evening sorry yesterday evening crossed over at Chitwa a new driveway Gary Main into Torchwood so if he did cross here I'm hoping he does come west if he does come west he's gonna come straight towards Juma side so let's hold thumbs let's hold claws let's do leopard dances Anyway, while we continue with this here at Chilapan, let's head back to Rexon while he is busy bumbling around at quarantine. Welcome back from Cedric uh, around Chilapan. We are here at uh, quarantine. It's such amazing. I was I was talking about um, seeing elephants in the area. Elephants are everywhere. It's quite a lot of uh, elephant um, in the surrounding. Look like in a beautiful, perfect light. And some of them are still coming. As I was saying earlier on the beginning of the safari, the elephant they move in the area knowing that uh, it's high quality of grass because elephant is one of the most species that have a best memory they've been here before they know that in a very good uh, rain season it will be more uh, grass in the area or healthy grass in the area and they manage to come back in there as reason we find lots of an elephant around in the surrounding because they still know from previous years that a certain portion of this land is such a beautiful beautiful 
grass. Of course, there is no doubt. If you look at the geographical area of the Sabisens Juma itself, Wild Earth area, we have a lot of drainage lines that makes the healthy grass to be really loving the area because all the water is go down towards the river it able to be harvested along also the deep root when the water flows it also deposited in the banks of this river and decompose and that encourage more healthy grass into the area and that it attracts more species to come in which is the best to do in a farm like this is to really take care of the grass or farming grass. Wherever I find, the, I mean, uh, bare patches, you have to brush, pack. Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag Wild Earth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. In that regard, I believe the Impala rely on the kudu for the sense of hearing. The elephant, of course, they rely on the physical healthy of themselves. You know, that are so strong and they can defend themselves. And they're proudly to be in the area because this is the biggest uh, land mammal around in the area. And also they're untouchable when it comes to predators that uh, hunt in the area. They can get hunted if they're weak, easily in the area, even by the pack of or the clan of hyena. What plant are most beneficial for an elephant? I've seen here in most cases the round, there's a plant called uh, round leaf tick or Caprotendus rotunda folia. It's one of the uh, plants that we see in most cases is highly nutritious and preferred by elephant. In, in the reserve where we are here, those particular plants cannot go bigger. They can uh, grow up to the level of all trees that might be in the reserve. You only see those trees in the area growing bigger outside the reserve where there's no movement of uh, elephant in that particular area. But inside the protected land where the elephant moves in and out, they get hammered quite a lot by elephant. Those are the, the plant that I know the most. Uh, uh, preferred by elephant itself. Time and again, you tend to see an elephant digging uh, some bulb. If most of people they called African wild potato bush, but uh, it, it really to me doesn't. Uh, I, I'm not sure with the name, but it's a big bulb. In winter, they really love by the elephant. It might have a certain name, which I still have to check, and I'll come back maybe next time when I join Wild Earth. Those are the plants that the elephant likes the more. They dig the roots and eat those roots. And I and I understand the most. I mean, if you look at the elephant migration in the area, they migrate due to food and water. There's reason sometimes you find that an elephant uh, stay in particular one area, more especially if water found all year round, and they tend to really love that particular area moving up and down. Some of the elephant, they do migrate, of course, there's no doubt. And it's, it's such amazing while I was talking about elephant getting weak, get hunted by the hyenas, and some of the elephant get by, hunted by uh, lions. Lynn, 
when the elephant have shrunk up, uh, it, it means it's really getting a scent that uh, he likes to follow up. That is all about investigating. Investigating, it could be water that can smell from far, or it could be healthy grass that really gets smelled by the elephant from far away and able to head that direction. Remember, the elephant have a very strong sense of smell. Even trying to relocate one member or individual members of the head itself, if the trunk is up, it means they're getting thermons that they can read from the trunk and go to the right direction. That's reason sometimes in the very dry season, it's very common to find elephant, most especially if they're looking for water. The trunks will be up, they can able to read the direction where the water can, where the water might be and able to, all of them follow one another heading towards the direction of the water it can be uh, like that in most cases but in general i mean like today is a special day finding an elephant or dreaming elephant in our society is two things that uh, might uh, really mean it can be meaning that uh, in your life, you are moving into the next level. If an African uh, person walk in the area, bump into elephant, uh, I mean, in several times, or vigorously in different head, it means that it tells him that in his level, he's moving to the next level. Or dreaming an elephant, it means to the next, le next level. And all about um, uh, elephant, it really symbolizes our forefathers that moves you from one step to another in prosperity. That's raising the African people, the respect elephant. And also, in our society, if you go back in history of uh, African people, they will tell you that if you marry a first wife from the family, a first wife, it called in Jovukazi. It means an elephant. An elephant is well respected in our culture. That particular individual person that means elephant is given a throne in that particular family. He's the one that is in charge for the whole family. That means if you are really seeing elephant, if you are walking in a bush and you never ever come across an elephant, even if you have come across an elephant, if you feel like you're seeing elephant a lot, that means good luck in your life. In your life, is how actually it works. Or also, if they call you an elephant in the whole society, it means you are a biggest structure within the whole society of the tribe. Maybe you know that like next level of being a, a chief or more than a chief. It's such amazing how actually the African believes in, in, in the whole society or also into the environment like this in the bush. Like I was saying earlier on, Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches, and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari, where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions, or could they be true? Join us to find out. Look at that, look at that, there's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy, we just came around the corner. That is incredible, that's probably his first solo kill. Ah, oh, that is wonderful. Oh, and have a look, here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. And look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. As I said, a, black, a blind snake, it means your enemy against you. So you have to be always wash up seeing a, 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 I mean a blind snake in your yard. Or if you walk, you come across with it. Mainly, also, if you come across the owl, any owl, giant eagle owl, barn owl, land into your yard. It's something that is not good in our society. As reason, if you find something like that, you have to consult people that can throw bones and can read fortune through the bones. They can prophesy through bones and tell you exactly. In most cases, people 
they really practice that and it really it's more concern from our society if an owl suddenly land in your yard even myself i really even even today i'm very much uh, civilized but uh, i still believe on this my civilization remember is by choice but uh, culture is something that is in my blood even i'm more civilized i have read the book i've known this i know that is for my it's coming for mice but i'm still my heart beat because i've seen something that i grew up that is in my blood that this is means not right so i have to go sometimes and consult if I have a business, I'll consult what's going on. If it's a snake, I'll still consult what's happening with my business because I've seen this or I've engaged with this. That means bad luck. If you come across with that, it means bad luck in our society. But uh, dreaming an elephant, dreaming a lion, a leopard is one of the most, most beautiful thing to dream and also to see. It means 100% good luck. It's such amazing. And again, if you dream on a lion or male lion, it means your forefathers from your father's side that always backing you in anything that might happen. We believe in African that uh, people that die, it's only the body, but the spirit, they still take care of us and still really send us good luck. But once you are seeing snake or blind snake, owl it means you are we are cast by your enemies so you have to fight for your, for your success amazing i love this elephant i was looking for talamba uh, i can see the text is headed uh, to the east i will go there and follow up but the way i'm engaging this elephant it's also make myself more excited indeed thank you so much it's a lot more information with the Shanghai tribe and some of this is very fascinating and some of it is very scary but uh, really I'd love to share with you more especially this beautiful afternoon day I was listening it looked like there was some pala lambing but it looked like uh, it's not it could be one of the a roller that giving a lamb call similar as impala i was so excited because i wanted to head on that direction let's take this opportunity and linking to chris which is having impala and warthog in pride land Lovely little scene here with the sun sort of getting close to, to setting. Just a beautiful scene. But in particular, there's a warthog, very big boar, that's very interested in a sow. And I want to see if they're actually going to mate. I'll just wait until they come out. <clears throat> there they're behind the impalas. can clearly see the fighting portion of the rut seems to be over. Now it's all the mating that's happening. My favorite thing about Wild Earth are the animals and the interaction and the ability to wait and watch and not rush off. You get to watch their behavior and learn about the individuals. I would like to see the hyenas at the hyena den, and I have. There they Look at that. <laughs> if I could be any animal, I would be a cheetah. I would love to run fast. Our Western Cape coastline is graced with a Cape fur seal. This playful species is curious and entertaining. At Hout Bay Seal Rescue Center, seals in need are rescued, fed and nursed back to health by our well-trained team of dedicated staff and volunteers. This wonderful legacy of the center is continued as these protected creatures are rehabilitated and released back into the wild. 
you can compare him to the size of the Impala. <laughs> he's a big guy. No, he's a bit distant, but should be going any closer, they'll probably run. their forest commented about this beautiful lighting yeah that's that proverbial golden hour light that we have here that is some of the best photography light that you can get so we were parked just behind those impala this morning and that leopard crossed over our tracks into the drainage to our left and I can bet you tonight we're going to hear that leopard again there's two leopards in fact that were calling throughout the night constantly I didn't really get much sleep without trying to figure out where the leopards are calling from. Lying away, right there they go, there they go, there they go, okay, now they're moving. Listening to leopards rasping the entire night. Hi there, Professor Bolton Classroom. I want to know, you know, since we're on the subject of superstition and Friday the 13th, where does the term holding thumbs come from? You know, I've got absolutely... What's wrong here, my boy? What are you seeing? Oops, not happy about something. Holding thumbs, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I actually do not know, to be honest. You see what's happening here? This guy, he's either seen another Impala male. This is warning him off. Listen, don't come close. You can see on his neck there he's got some marks from fighting. But I often also seen when you park next to Impalas, they're not used to us watching them for prolonged periods. So they start thinking, whoa, why is this game viewer here? Maybe there's a, they're following a leopard or something, and then they start these sort of probe alarm calls. So they think, okay, maybe if I do that probe alarm call, the leopard will think I see it, and it will stand up, and then I will actually see it. So it's, it's, it's more like, a, like a throwing a rock into the bushes and see what jumps out type of shot. If there's a leopard or a lion around, all of them would have gone like that, you know, and it would have been very, very intensive alarm calling. He's looking behind us, but I don't think it's a predator yet. Uh, he's just probing. Because <laughs> then, like I said, they're not used to us watching them for long periods. Let's go over to Cedric and then we're gonna try and find us a copy to climb. Uh, Cedric's got some very entertaining dwarf mongoose. Hey, yes, I can imagine, but look at this. We've got a little dwarf mongoose all playing around and grooming each other. Yeah, uh, just north of Chitwa Dam. Hello. Of course, uh, all of them are running around us. I'm pretty much all past the car now, but most of them are still one or two that's coming in front of the vehicle. I'm becoming very relaxed. Of course, these are the old smallest little carnivores in southern uh, 
Uh, Southern Africa. Yeah, there's a little one on the road there in front of us. Yeah, don't worry. Of course, they're all finishing up and, uh, with their foraging for the night. Slowly but surely, I'm sure they're heading back to a little den site somewhere. And I know they stay in the termite mounds or little broken or fallen down trees. Uh, I'll make that like little den sites for themselves. If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colours, a very useful tote bag or even a cap. For those in the southern hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm. Head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. Hukamore. Oh, he is an impressive looking male leopard. Look at that neck on him. He just looks ready for a fight. This is only the third time that we are seeing him that is known as the Hukamori male. And he certainly has a lot of character and atmosphere. This is gorgeous. Hukamori having a drink at one of the little seasonal pans. Isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Compact, powerful, focused. I love it. Sorry about this. It's a little bit difficult at the moment. Yeah, a little bit difficult at the moment with uh, these little dwarf mongoose now running uh, behind the vehicle. I'm sorry about the aerial there, but they've decided, they decided to make it uh, a mission for Igor to uh, get the camera work going. Yeah. <laughs> Igor was like kind of uh, almost doing, uh, what was it, that, that there's a game where you have to put your hands on, on different colours <laughs> on the mid. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, yeah, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us here on uh, our beautiful Lucky and Unlucky Friday, the 13th Sunset Safari. But Emma, they are very entertaining. Dwarf mongoose, we definitely can watch them all day. But I do apologize for a little bit of that aerial. But as I said, they did make it a little bit of a, a tricky situation for you go to uh, view them. But yes, definitely we can view them all the time. Absolutely, really stunning little animals. I love them too, but... Of course, there's quite a big pack, so you'll find these families can get up to about 30 plus minus. <laughs> Kathy Lee, once again, as always, thank you very much for joining us, and especially on today. It is uh, Friday the 13th, our lucky and lucky sunset safari. And uh, yes, Kathy Lee, as well for uh, yesterday. Happy birthday, I think. Yeah, yesterday was your birthday. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday for that as well. So I'm glad, I'm hoping you had a fantastic day yesterday. But yes, thank you very much for your comment. Uh, definitely, I think uh, uh, the dwarf mongoose, I have spent a lot of time, as I said, when I started guiding um, uh, dwarf mongoose and of course the cuckoos, uh, the valens and the jackman cuckoo and the dwarf mongoose was kind of a project for me where I spent a lot of time with them uh, at the lodge where I started and why so in case there was a rainy rainy day and we couldn't go out for a drive that we had um, a certain projects that we had to talk about and of course as I said dwarf mongoose was one of the projects the same as the cuckoos so yes I love them two bits and definitely spent some good Good time. If I have to think about hours, you're yeah, loads of hours with dwarf mongoose. But thank you very much, Kathy Lee. I really appreciate it. All right. I think uh, let's head towards Chitwa Dam. Let's go and see what is happening at uh, Chitwa Dam. Chitwa Chitwa Dam. <coughs> Maybe those little baby crocs are around there. Let's take a look. Hopefully they are sunbathing out there. Wild Earth explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. 
We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag WildEarth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's a new name. All right, we're just going to stop here. There is another vehicle behind us, and we're just going to let him go past, and we can stop on the dam wall and take a look. But we're going to watch, look over the beautiful dam at this point of time, and actually take a look at what's happening around here. So yes, uh, it is a stunning day. Hello, Cedric. How are you? Good afternoon, hi folks. Good, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Debbie. Oh, how are you? Good. So yes, as you can see, it is really cooling down now at the moment. And uh, slowly but surely, of course, the hippos are going to be becoming more active. But you can see that beautiful tree with those big nests in them. Of course, the red-billed uh, buffalo weavers that make those big, big nests, which are really, really beautiful. And of course, not the most prettiest of nests, but each one has got a little apartment compartment inside of that nest, and they all use uh, different little kind of entrances, so it actually confuses differently your predators and all that. All right, so that's all that. So yeah, and uh, sorry about that, everybody. It uh, there was another vehicle that. Uh, Yes, good afternoon, Picky. Uh, definitely, I'll be looking on that dead stump. Uh, I think I, we did look yesterday. I know Kat and myself were on the dam wall. We did look yesterday. There was nothing. So we'll definitely take a look again now. I'm just a bit worried that it is a bit cool now So for those crocs to be um, out there. But we'll quickly take a look. But I do once again, there was a vehicle next to me then. No, I had actually some of my old guests that was on that vehicle, <laughs> which is very strange. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I wanted, I, well, of course, I don't, of course, I'll greet them. But uh, yeah, I, I just want to, um, of course, explain what's happening here at the dam as well. What a beautiful African jacana, and I love these African jacanas. I think they've got the most amazing little talons, not little, oh, the most amazing long talons, and really built for all these uh, water lilies and water weeds, and really walking on top and uh, picking off all the little insects, and little water arthropods around here, and of course, uh, little pond skaters, lots and lots of them around the side. Very nice to see them around here. Yeah, very interesting, and of course, as you know, it is the, with the African jacana. It's the male that looks after and rear the little chicks up. Earth lover, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us, as always, once again, yeah, on our sunset safari. Of course, Friday the 13th, ooh. But yes, definitely never, there's never a dull moment. I always, <laughs> I always, always love uh, a good old uh, entertainment. You know the bush is always, there's always so much around and so much happening. So it is always nice just to kind of uh, go with the flow and have a lovely day out here on safari. But yeah, thank you so much, Earth Lover. All right, I think uh, I'm going to try and see if we can get to that log. What we're going to try and do, let's try and get to that log. Um, no, not the, not the salamander, Solomon, but thank you for joining us and thank for the question. Do we have the salamander? Not that I know of, uh, Solomon, but I can get back to you with that one. Let me double check on that. Um, that is definitely... Uh, not that I know of any salamanders, so I, um, I think the salamanders, isn't it further down towards the coastal side? You got anything there, Eagle, in the um, coast? I'm not sure on this, but as far as I know, we actually don't get any salamanders. Salamanders, Africa, Africa, yeah, I think maybe in um, South America, I think, yeah. But yeah, we can always take a definite double check on that one. Thank you very much. I will keep that in mind and uh, we'll get back to you about that answer.
All right, let's go look for the little crocs. Maybe we're lucky. Maybe we're lucky to find a croc or two. Well, especially the little babies. I would love to see them. Oh, in my eye. Yes, keeping my fingers and my toes crocs. Cross, crocs, cross, cross crocs, cross crocs. Ah, uh, yeah, it's too, it's too cool. It's, a, it's unfortunately we are at that log yet now, and uh, yeah, there's nothing on this log. I think it's too cool at the moment. I think what you have to do, you have to come right in the beginning of the afternoon safari, and you have to come right up to this log and then take a look. I think now those little crocs went into the water because it's now uh, the sun has set and it's pointless for them being up here and open. All right, thank you. So I'll just still now, Eagle just told me, so salamanders do not occur in sub-Sahara Africa, so they do not yeah, exist in Africa. Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches, and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari, where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions, or could they be true? Join us to find out. Look at that, look at that, there's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy, we just came around the corner. That is incredible, that's probably his first solo kill. Ah, oh, that is wonderful. I oh, have a look, here comes Hosanna with the monitor lizard. Hosanna, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. Look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Hosanna at the moment. So, <clears throat> Picky, I'm really sorry. I'm, uh, yeah, that is uh, just unfortunate that we could not uh, get these little baby crocs. But I think what to, what I'll do tomorrow, what I'm going to plan, because I, I really want to see them as well, is um, I'm going to see if we can come here a little bit earlier. I'm going to come back a little bit earlier tomorrow, uh, or tomorrow afternoon, and while it is 100% and then much warmer, and then we can actually take a look if they'll be sitting on these logs. But yeah, but it is now, it looks like... I'm gonna double check, sorry. It looks like this uh, water hole is not too much at the moment yet, at, the moment, at this point of time. I think we will take a look, we will actually look around further uh, towards the airstrip again. I know yesterday afternoon we had a cracker of afternoon there at uh, on the western side of uh, Chitwa airstrip. And I think what we'll do, we'll head into that direction very soon again. And uh, I'm going to take a look. And... Oh, there's African. Oh, there we go. A little black crack with a yellow beak. But yes. While we uh, watch Little Black Crack, let's head to Rickson while he's bubbling around. Welcome back from Cheetah Dam with uh, Cedric. We're back in the area where we have last seen tracks of uh, Kalamba and the Cubs. Looked like early in the morning, they were in the area from where we are. Look, the tracks are moving towards the east. We'll check again Chitakat line towards the, the Gari Pefesuk boundary. She might have made a kill in the area, who knows? She might be uh, left the cups because the tracks, the fresh tracks, is on Drunkersbeck Road, heading north and cut to the east. But there's no cups tracks involved. So she might be. I still had it uh, more to the east, but the cups, I believe, the last tracks of the cups that were here, one, it looked like headed that way, mother cups headed uh, towards the east, 
maybe we might be lucky we'll concentrate more into the area maybe we might be lucky who knows and leopard likes to go up in the tree late in the evening like this and uh, pretty much on top of the drainage uh, top of the termites where they might uh, really see what might be coming towards them because they have competition The last tracks of the cups went directly. We cannot read both sides of the road, but mainly, you know that cups likes to move. If a mother left them in the area, they can move at any time in different location where they feel like they can be safe. Check here carefully where the mother, where finally she crossed. Find a way into into the kill to eat, get their fill in there as well. But they're also going to be told off. See, it's, lions are not great at sharing their food. <laughs> Just taking frustration out on the other lion, but you see, it was interesting. In the woodlands of Juma lives a lion pride with a taste for buffalo. Look, 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 this is insane. Now, this is what I was saying about lions and buffalo it's absolute pandemonium. Wild Earth have been privileged to follow the Nkuhuma pride for many years. One of the most loved cats in the pride is Amber Eye. She was not successful in rearing her first two litter of cubs and was seen as an aunt to the other youngsters. Then eventually, towards the end of August 2019, we found her with four tiny cubs of her. Definitely the cubs also crossed in the area. They had a uh, stretch to Torchwood. Cross where we are exactly. They're aiming in, in this direction. She might be having a kill. Yeah, the best thing to do for Liam and uh, Cedric from Pipeline Chittacat Line, they have to come and check here. She crossed straight direct into touch with the, the cups itself. I hope maybe if we can drive slowly here, all these big uh, Amarula and Temite mounts, we, we might be lucky spot these cups. If they have a medical, they might be on top of the tree by now, feeding. Unless if they will go and further more down towards the uh, 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 Terminalia roads. Let's take this opportunity linking to Chris. Oh, he's having a beautiful, beautiful sunset. This is why I came here. This is why I do what I do. It's for moments like this. I mean, how can you not appreciate this? You know what? Being able to sit here on top of this dollarite copy, watching this in front of me, makes me the luckiest man on the planet. I don't need leopards, or lions, or any other luck. For me, this just make me realize how lucky doing what I do. You can see almost the entire Pride Lens from here. Got this sort of beautiful view of this valley below towards Leopard Dam. This beautiful ridge to our left, well to our south. It's just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It's got the mountains in the background. Not very clear today, but they're still there.
can hear some buffaloes, actually, towards Leopard Dam. Sounds like they're drinking there. You know, another lucky find here. It's got nothing to do with superstition yet again. It's just I seem to find all sorts of things up on this ridges. This is called Mother-in-Law's Tongue. It's got some other names, Sansevieria. It's actually a, a few of them growing right behind me here. And it's a very useful plant. While we wait for the sun, it's still about five boards down. So firstly, here at the edge, when you pull them out from their roots, they've got this little white. And that can be sucked for some water, some moisture. It's got a sort of turnip. Sort of turnip-like flavor. A little bit bitter, but there's a lot of moisture in this. You can actually suck it out. It's there. Give me a bit of a chew and you can hear that. It's coming out there. So it does grow in dry areas as well. It's not this tasteful. But one thing about this, this is some of the best twine that you can find in the bush. This makes incredible wraps. You can see how it sort of just, look at that. <laughs> Super strong stuff. This is very, very thin. I mean, this is like, but this is this is super super strong stuff and I can't break it so you just peel off these individual fibers a little bit might be a bit far but it makes fantastic rope even something as thin as that them weave them together as super strong stuff mother-in-law's tongue I'm gonna leave it there for something to eat it later And while you watch, I'm just going to weave it around my stick. My lucky charm. Self-improvised lucky charm. Deborah says she's got plenty of them at the house, yes. It's a very popular garden plant in South Africa. It grows naturally out here in the bush. All over parts of South Africa, probably not in forests. And yes, take one and taste it. It's got a bitterness to it, but you'll, you'll, you'll see how you can use it in a survival scenario for moisture. Let's look at that. I think we've got about, about just roughly about five minutes of, of sun before it's going to disappear. Catherine, hi there. Also commenting what I think we all feel is just beautiful Africa. Absolutely, and it's just something about the sunsets here. It's just... And it varies. You should go to... Yeah, that's amazing. Different to here. Different. Even if you go to the normal desert, even... Oh, it's breathtaking there as well. Each with their own atmosphere. This is hard to beat, though. It's got this beautiful view of this valley below you. My name is Tessa. I studied animals and insects, and I specialized in African vertebrate biodiversity. But first and foremost, I am a naturalist here at Wild Earth. What inspired me to become a naturalist was a combination of a childhood love and passion for wildlife from our family holidays. It just became this amazing passion and it ignited this fire that just would not go away. To me, the skills that a naturalist should have would be that passion, making sure that you know why you've got that passion and keeping it going no matter what. The determination to never give up because it's not the easiest place to be but I can tell you in my experience it's the best place to be with the biggest differences that you can make. If I could be any animal I think I would be a leopard. To me they're the perfect combination of elegance and power and determination and independence and yet just so beautiful. Mm 
common, called common corkwood growing above me here, right there. Interesting, you don't see them much down below. We get the velvet corkwood down below it. Can he do it for those who speak Afrikaans, my language? Can he do it? They often look very dead and dry in winter. And then suddenly when it rains, they spring back to life. They appear very, very dead. Corkwoods. Comifera. Well, I probably can't hug this sunset, all of it, you know. Let's, let's give Cedric a chance as well. He's also looking at the sunset. Yes, there's nothing better than an African sunset here in the bush felt. It is so beautiful. I mean, it's just going behind the Drakensberg Mountains slowly but surely and uh, it is really a stunning sighting again. I've definitely got uh, my new favorite sunset place out of all. It's definitely on a Chitwa airstrip. I think this, uh, this uh, view from here is just magical, absolutely magical. And plus we are quite lofted and raised up quite high. So it's nice in case if anything does call, we are pretty much around and we can actually determine where it's calling from. Oh, look at that. And that's Maripskop. That, just that corner. And it's known as Maripskop off the Drakensberg mountain. Yes, another beautiful day in Africa. And uh, there's the colors, the sightings and the sounds. Woodpecker, good, uh, good afternoon, or good evening, good morning, wherever you're watching from. Thank you for joining us on our sunset safari. And uh, yes, definitely envious as well. I've really, uh, really do think, uh, uh, I think we are very fortunate to have this as our front garden. And yes, we don't have to mow the lawns, thanks to the rest. But look how quickly the sun goes down. Yeah, definitely the animals do the mowing for us. Goodbye, sun. Goodbye, day. Goodbye, Friday. Day. Yes, and uh, well, there goes the sun setting beautiful behind those Drakensberg mountains. And uh, I'm still thinking we are fortunate. And I've got some other news for you. I just want to let you know that um, once again, uh, Marips did come back onto Chitwa during the daytime towards the driveway and then uh, I don't know what he did but then this afternoon one one of the vehicles just briefly saw him going back north again from the driver over Gowrie into Torchwood so uh, he might have a kill that's uh, that's there um, just inside to Torchwood itself so I think that's is maybe the reason exactly using for the last two days or yesterday and today using the same area going back and forth. So what we are going to do, that's why I'm around the side now, just waiting a little bit, maybe in the next, say, uh, uh, five to 10 minutes, just definitely move into that area. And I'm hoping uh, that his kill is finished or that he's decided to come down for another uh, drink towards uh, one hour pan area to the drive, Chitwa New Driveway, one hour pan road. So that would be nice. My favorite thing about Wild Earth are the animals and the interaction and the ability to wait and watch and not rush off. You get to watch their behavior and learn about it, the individuals. I would like to see the hyenas at the hyena den, and I have. There they are. Look at that. <laughs> if I could be any animal, I would be a cheetah. I would love to run fast. 
Our Western Cape coastline is graced with a Cape fur seal. This playful species is curious and entertaining. At Hald Bay Seal Rescue Centre, seals in need are rescued, fed and nursed back to health by our well-trained team of dedicated staff and volunteers. This wonderful legacy of the centre is continued as these protected creatures are rehabilitated and released back into the wild. Definitely, what a sunset and now we've got that moonrise on the eastern side. Of course, as I said, it is in the waning process, so it is, uh, it is becoming larger. And it's amazing, look at those craters that you see on the moon. It is unbelievable. And so, so that's a, a typical picture, I always look at the moon there, you can just see now, you'll see that real rabbit form um, on the left hand side. It looks like a rabbit. So it's always showing that side of the moon towards us. So every time you see a moon and uh, a picture of the moon, you will see pretty much uh, that uh, rabbit on the left hand side of the moon. So yes, very, very interesting. And it's such a huge crater that's as well right on the north. Like north if we can say it, at the two o'clock uh, side of the moon, there's a nice big crater there as well. But what an evening. Got to love it. Just well shot there, Igor. That's actually so cool. Very nice. It's like the moon's moving across the screen. That's not my camera moving. Oh, uh, the moon's actually yeah. moving. So Igor's just told me now, of course, the camera is very much uh, uh, stable and uh, fixed. So now you're just keeping still. And look, you can actually see the moon really moving from the right hand side of the screen to the left hand side. So it's almost in the center now. So to actually see the moon moving, it is incredible. <laughs> wow, hey? Yeah, that is so, so, so good. Yeah, it's like going from right to like top. Yeah, it's going across like that, that's right. From the bottom right to the top left. It's almost to the top now. Well, as we watch the moon creeping to the top, let's head to Rexon to see how his safari is going. Welcome back uh, from Sad uh, with beautiful moon. Of course, we are headed. Uh, we are heading straight to the west. We come from the area where. Kalamba and the cups were uh, definitely the crossing to touch wood. It'll be the best tomorrow morning to check. I would love to check in the western sector. Early in the morning, we have spotted the tracks. Look like a male leopard that were moving to the west of Belanati. Tracks haven't come out uh, towards the Flowers Catlan Gary Main. Check chances you will never know whether the leopard is still on that area or not. But it might happen that uh, I suspect it could be Tavangwome. He might be still in this area. The road that we're traveling now here, yeah, Tavangwome is more into our right. This is Prefess Hook. Sometimes he really operates in the area, hunts around here. Yeah was Triple M on that era. And he get pushed quite a lot. Or he have competition with uh, Toto Span. He doesn't stay much towards the west. He come and he cross to the north. We might be lucky seeing Tavangume. There's quite a lot of uh, small Tavangume matter that uh, it really confused me. While I'm driving, talking at the same time, I'm looking around here. I nearly uh, shouted and point a Tamat man that is uh, really below this. If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colors, a very useful tote bag or even a cap. For those in the Southern Hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm. Head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. 
I'm not going to come too close because I know you got your babies. And hello you old friend. Isn't she spectacular? Oh look, it's just too special. She's such a fantastic mother. Look at that, isn't that incredible? This area where we are here is very well known. Finding leopards that cross from the Sydney's Dam back to Juma direction. Let's see if around the Befesuk sign there's no tracks here. Maybe we might be lucky uh, follow up on the leopard or maybe one of these uh, Temat Mount, who knows? Hyenas. Arctic Circle asking when last. Look at the double bender sun grass right uh, patching on the road. When last we have seen the ostrich. Uh, Arctic Circle, ostrich are found a little bit more to the north where it's more open. In this area here, ostrich, if it set the foot around it, cannot survive. It's very thick. They're unlikely to be hunted uh, within a period of two hours if they're in the area. They were followed by leopards and lions. And this very thick, of course, uh, they can be killed. They prefer open space uh, around north, Manyeleti boundary, Befesuk. They tend to report now and then sighting of the ostrich. The double bender sun grass at the moment is just really patching on the road. They need, uh, of course, an uh, area where it's more open. They can able to see on the grass quite a lot of things that might surprise them. The civet, of course, and it can be a snakes, African rock python, a lot more to mention. So they really prefer to be in open patches like this. This is one of the species of bird uh, similar with pigeon and doves, of course. But these guys, late in the afternoon like this, you tend to see them really flying and going, uh, I mean, going towards the water source. They really love to go in late in the afternoon to drink water and come back. And of course, if they do have chicks, they have an ability to really suck the chest into the water. The fair are very soft and they can hold water like a sponge and fly back and able to really give the youngster water to drink. It's unbelievable to see that taking off and come back in the same area. You see the youngster going to the fair and really, uh, I mean, sucking water easily like that. Unbelievable species. These are the double banded sun grouse. Double banded sun grouse. They are very, very common around in the area. Look at the colors they have. They are well camouflaged to the ground also. Male are a lot more beautiful. They have yellow eyes. Unfortunately, they are facing in the wrong direction for you to see that. As we know that uh, always males are beautiful. If you look at them in nature, if you look at the male leopard, male lions, even in general as human beings, we men were so much beautiful. Let's carry on and check to the worst. The double banded sand grass. It's really common, especially in this area of uh, Juma Conservancy. You see lots of them everywhere around you, especially this time of the day. They come out in, in numbers from the tall grasses. They eat quite a lot of seeds from the grass. There are similarities to Franklin's. Franklin, like, eats the top of the seeds. And uh, 
you find them in tall grasses, uh, riverbeds, where the healthy rich grass are normally found. Let me check a uh, orb fruit. Maybe here, who knows? All Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag WildEarth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions or could they be true? Join us to find out. I believe by tomorrow that our hyena den will be active. I think uh, they might be visited somewhere where it could be a big feast. I hope the guys will check, they will check tomorrow. If not, uh, they might be still hyena can leave the den, especially if a big carcass is around in the area, surrounded by lions. They're very much patient. They can wait and return back to the den, maybe in the course of a day, nest the youngster and go back and wait until the lions move. You may find that sometimes while they're waiting between lions and the hyenas, they can challenge one another and start a fight. And in most cases, we all know that if there's no male involved from the pride, the hyena always will win the fight. As raising even the pride of lion itself, it rely on the male. If there's no male involved on the pride, that particular pride, you know that is not going to really be successful on the area where they might be hunting. It's very easy to be challenged by a hyena, and it's very easy to be challenged by the new pride that has a male involved in a pride itself, and that can send a resident pride out of the area. Is exactly what happened from uh, Telamati. The new male comes in, uh, dark man is so weak he cannot able to defend, and now all the sub others, females that accepted the male, they're now dwelling with the male. Lovely. Let's cross to Sadik. He's having surprise. Yes, thank you very much, Rexon. Well, first of all, I'll definitely going to try and give uh, a go and uh, take a look. Uh, I always do uh, try and take a look there at the hyena den. I think it's always nice and uh, unfortunately, as Rexon says as well, I think uh, they definitely there somewhere with a kill and haven't been there yesterday and today. Uh, but I'll definitely, we'll always go take a look again tomorrow morning and uh, first thing in the morning to see if anybody's home. But yes, on top of that, I'm on uh, Chitwa New Driveway. So yes, uh, they did have Maripsia during the day on the driveway again. So exactly the same as yesterday. So I don't, I'm sure he's got a kill just inside Torchwood. Uh, and there is no water around where he's most probably got a, a kill. And uh, he's been coming down towards uh, New Driveway, one up and there is a pan around here. Um, I don't know if you remember anybody was with us on that drive where we had uh, one of those hyenas inside of that little uh, water pan with the uh, wild dogs uh, surrounding that hyena. But yeah, that's uh, where I would think Marips would have gone to have a bit of a drink. So I'm going to go down the new driveway now just to take a look carefully if we see anything. And hopefully we are lucky. 
If not, I'm going to go around to one up pan, take a look at that pan itself and see if anybody's home there. Or anybody's having a nice little sundowner. That would be fun. If you can locate on one of them. But it is, what a fantastic uh, sunset this evening or today. It was really, really stunning once again, as always here in the, in the bush felt. I was just thinking about uh, what's happened to Langa. I haven't seen Langa for a while. Langa has uh, disappeared. I know that they might have had her in Little Gauri. So I think she might be just east of uh, her mother's territory. So that's, of course, uh, Sibui. Uh, Sibui's uh, territory is just inside Hoffman's vessels. And I think Langa is spending a lot of time towards uh, Little Gauri and uh, Annette's at south of us and of course on the western side of Chitwa. So I think Lunga has really started to set her area up in that uh, in that, that place. But it's going to be interesting to see if she is going to push further north, maybe towards Twin Dams. Um, because she has gone all the way up to Twin Dams or just north of Twin Dams. And uh, sorry, I just saw something under the tree there. Something just caught my eye there. Oh no, it's a bushbuck. Looks like a bushbuck, a niala bushbuck. Bushbuck, niala. It's under the tree. But anyway, I can't see it nicely. Okay. The antelope that's hidden away there. So yes, it's going to be very interesting times to see where, how far Langa does go, especially at her age now that she is setting up a territory. Look at that, look at that, there's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy, we just came around the corner. That is incredible, that's probably his first solo kill. Oh, that is wonderful. Oh, and have a look, here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. And look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. rate has gone up slightly. In fact, it's gone up quite a lot. This elephant is now two meters from us. Okay, we might have to move here. No? Yes. Sorry, my friend, but you're about to push that onto the car. You see how cross he was that we didn't want to watch him push the tree over. That's why we moved. <laughs> So, yes, um, this is where we had his tracks crossing yesterday and apparently as well today. So, he has gone from this side here in. And so, I'm going to just quickly look at one hour pan road if he didn't come back through here. A lot of hyena tracks going back and forth. I see a, a, definitely a vehicle went in here. So, I think he's gone through. Yeah, let's see, maybe we're lucky, we, maybe we are lucky. It is that getting to that time of the day now. It is getting nice and, it's getting nice and cool now, much darker as well, getting darker, so it's gonna be perfect timing for the leopards and lions to start moving around. But while we continue searching, let's head to Chris. He's sitting with his buffalo. luck after all and there's more to it so we heard the buffalo drinking at leopard down we came here the herd has moved on this is just a couple of old dugger boys and young bulls that uh, are trailing them and we found them and can you note something particular about this marula tree can you remember Last week, we found a talking leopard in this very same tree. In fact, on that very same branch, where the buffalo is standing. Then we found that big talking leopard, that fat one, Maguiri. He was lying right there. Ali is me. So maybe that brought us luck. This marula tree brought us luck, and we found the buffalo. Oh, 
Oh, light is fading, so this is really lit, literally last minute luck. <laughs> Interesting with the marilla tree, now that we're on luck. There's a tribe living around the town north of here called Palaborva. I can't remember what they call themselves, but they've got a tradition to get married, and that's not particular to them as, a, as well, but several cultures do that, but they get married under marula trees, and that will give the marriage a blessing. That's, that's seen as good luck and a blessing for the marriage, so much so that should they have later marital problems, they come back to the same tree with their traditional healer and the chief of the area to obviously do rituals and guidance but it has to be the same marula tree so if that tree is damaged by elephants or in fact damaged by fire or something they'll have to find a new tree and almost get remarried in a way not remarried but go through another ritual to cast new luck and new sort of prosper on 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 on, on the marriage itself quite quite interesting about marula trees while we still on luck and unluck and how awesome is it that it's come full circle to the talking leopard tree? Incredible. Definitely ending with a lucky streak. Tingana has been affectionately known as the Duke of Juma for many years, but his path to the throne was not an easy one. Mvula was a legend from the south. This is the cat that I'm pretty sure Tingana was sniffing around for. That is Mvula. How exciting is this? Eventually, Mvula lost, but his young son, Quarantine, started to push through from the east. At the beginning of 2018, an intruder arrived. His name was Hukumuri. how calm they are I mean, when they're right next to the car it won't be this close on foot i tell you that Kenny love your question the dynamics of a buffalo herd Right, so it's not one single herd. It's actually a conglomerate of small groups that travel together. So you will have a core group of cows, which often related cows. And you'll have a bull that almost act as a, I can't say a harem, but a breeding bull for that subgroup. In fact, if you fly over a herd of buffalo, you can actually see these individual groups. But as you move with them on the ground, then it appears like one big herd. All right, so then, some younger bulls are not yet capable to compete for mating rights. We'll leave the group and they might join up in bachelor groups as we can see here. There's young and old bulls and some older bulls that are not able to compete any longer will then also move away and form these small bachelor groups. And these bachelor groups can vary from solitary individuals to 20, 30 I've seen. Generally it's a few of them, three, four, five of them. I often hear a number of guides and naturalists mentioning that these old dugger boys leave because they are too old to move with their herd. That's not entirely beaten by stronger, younger bulls. Because I've often seen dugger boys surrounded by younger bulls. So they do rejoin herds. I've seen that happen. It's just that the competition for females becomes too rife 
and then they move themselves to suitable areas with good grazing, often along drainage lines. Then there's no more need for them to move that long distances that the big herds do, and they can stick in a certain area. So that's why you'll often see the same group of dugger boys and bulls in the same area. They often choose themselves almost like a bit of an address. Hi, Kimbo. Thanking us for sharing the most beautiful moment on bushwalk with them. Well, didn't do much walking today. We did our own little bit of a driving. We did climb a hill. Tomorrow we will be walking in all earnest again. Tomorrow we'll be on foot for most of the morning and afternoon safari. Not sure exactly what our plan will be. We'll have to wait and see. I'll come up with something. Yeah, so tomorrow we will be walking serious, serious, serious bushwalking. It's going to be proper. What a way to end the day. What a way. I still on the bushwalk. Very, very interesting, Chris. I believe you are really finding stuff. The buffalo, maybe leopards. When I was on your way back to the camp, cross finger to find leopards. I mean, the area where we have seen uh, trucks look like uh, coming direct from the west on Zoe's Road. Looking, if we may get to see. Leopard in the area. Who oh, knows? It looked like uh, if we look at the side of the road, it tells more. There's more grass, a lot of cover. Even if a leopard is three meters away, it won't be easy to find. But what is more interesting here is the movement uh, or the migration of an elephant. They cover each and every road. There is no much evidence that you can read on the ground, well, especially if an elephant gets into that uh, area before you get in. Even if it's the leopard tracks that have walked on that particular road, you're going to be struggle to read the tracks because the elephant also like traveling along the road. If uh, on this road here, yeah, I can see tracks of an elephant now and then. I see tracks of look like a hyena, but the elephant have covered the whole area. But it's only for a few weeks, I believe the elephant will start to migrate in other areas, of course, as far as south. We were able to see or able to read more tracks was the number of an elephant that die in the area at the moment shift and move to the south and continuously heading back east, Kruger and to the north. Of course, we're looking for anything that might be exciting, even elephant fighting or lion that get hunted by an elephant, it will be nice to see that. Coming from the north, there was tracks that looked like a pride of lions, and one single track headed uh, north early, probably this morning. I'm not sure which pride might be, maybe the breakaway from... This morning we were driving and suddenly we heard a lot of commotion. I think the wild dogs might have caught an impala then, or the leopard might have caught the impala, and as it was dragging it, the wild dog sword started chasing the leopard up into the tree, and then the hyenas came to steal it. But, uh, what an incredible sighting. 
with the Taj stories, I've learned that uh, it does have future and a past. If you follow it, it will never ever go wrong in life. It's very important because it contains, of course, the history background and the knowledge of the bush. In each every family, they have so-called a tree or Amar ruler tree. We'll go there and kneel down and talk to the tree and say, we want success in the family. I went on his way uh, through Manyaleti. He has spotted uh, a big pretty herd of uh, buffalo, more than 500. It's now time for those buffalo to get in, in the area. They're migrating from the north and gets to the south. Mainly, they followed by pride of lions. We might start to see some action. I just spotted an eye. It looked like a gnu shape. It's not a buffalo. I'm going to continuously heading more to the south. I'm looking for eye reflection in a bush on top of the tree. Sometimes it's more useful because it's how actually you can locate leopards in the area. Not only leopard that can climb trees, sometimes lions surprise you. Climb trees around in the area and you can really be lucky if you find the lion because most of the time our lions spend hunting on the ground. The time they go up, especially the sub-adults, females, they like going up in a tree for fun. Sometimes they try to scavenge from leopard kills. They do they go up in a tree. Checking here. It's one of the. Uh, oh, oh. Kimala asking, do we not see hyena in the area just because of the high density of the hyenas? So we don't see leopards. Hyena, uh, I mean, Kimala sometimes it might come to do it. Let me say, honest speaking. Hyena, uh, in case of Kalamba, she'll, she'll avoid area where there's a more high density of hyena due to the cubs because she can lose the cubs easily. Most especially where the hyena are more active. In the area of Chuma Conservancy, we have more hyena, uh, I have no doubt, that can really make the leopard uh, shift into a different area where it tend to be less uh, competition at all. The competition of hyena, it's, it's not healthy because once the one hyena spotted a leopard or found a leopard on the kill, it will be attracting the whole clan to come in and fight. So that is unfair, fighting, it has to be one and one. But if 20 hyena come and steal the impala away from the leopard, you can see that uh, the leopard can move out of that particular area because it's huge competition. I'm not sure how many individuals are from the uh, Juma clan, but uh, I doubt it might be over 20 up to 30. Maybe it can be more because most of the time you cannot calculate it, you can't see how many individuals that are involved. Those who are named, you're able to know them, but those who doesn't have names, you cannot uh, really know where they might be. Even coming across with them, you'll never know that they form a part of the Jumat land. I believe that because one day during the day, uh, we located Swazi at uh, Sandy patch coming from the west, so it could be a bigger picture of that land. Ribbon is the matriarch and has recently been seen with injuries to her body. Corky was the previous matriarch and is believed to be taken back her status. Intima was born to Ribbon in February 2017 and also enjoys a high ranking. Hart is the next rank down, and in June is believed to be the lowest rank, easily recognizable by a floppy left ear. 
three brothers named the Avoca males arrived in Juma in 2018. This area had recently been vacated by the Birmingham boys. In 2019, they were seen mating with females from both prides and went on to sire cubs with them. The most recognizable lion in this coalition is Dark Mane. Aside from the Dark Mane that gave him his name, he can be recognized by a distinctive limp. And as we, we find these uh, Kohumas or Telamatis moving slightly more north to the south, or south to the, also to the north, because this area is huge competition, it's that easy to lose the cubs from the hyenas. It's one of the fact, of course, there's no doubt, it's, to, it's lots of hyena in the area. But again, if you look at the leopard, a leopard forced to be in the area because they are territorial. They are not having big uh, territory as far as lions. Some of the leopard, like Kalamba, does have territory from uh, oh, Zoe all the way down to Chitakatlan, and now she's overlapping to the east, which is her mother's territory on that area. She's uh, more comfortable to take the cubs around in that area. Furthermore, east, I don't know how far she can travel, but she has to come back, uh, back and forth in the same area. If she wants to avoid hyenas on the kills, she has to concentrate something small as far like her mother, uh, Tandy. She used to hunt something small because she was not uh, that much more powerful or to carry kills like Impala up into a tree because she was so old, concentrating on the Steenbok and Grey Decker. Immediate effect, she would manage to take the kill up in a tree and the hyena would lose. You know that immediate effect, the hyena able to get the sound of lambing, they will respond on that area, knowing that maybe leopard have made the kill in order to steal the killer away from the leopard. So having more hyenas, it have a huge impact for lions and uh, leopards, of course. We're moving here, this is one of the road loved by Dominic Mal. You know, I mean, Bafu, I mean, Tingana used to travel a lot in this road. We, I have planned to put this road because there were lots of leopard movement. At the moment, uh, we have seen Shidulu quite a lot moving still in the same area. Remember, Tingana and Shidulu, they have met it before. And uh, of course, until Jordans come and take over. I mean, Molowati come and take over from uh, Tingana. It is a perfect area, of course, for leopards to be in the area. Still very thick. A leopard likes to be in a cover all the time. Then they can easily hunt and be successful. This area will be, won't be loved or not be liked by cheetah because it's really very thick. It won't manage, cheetah can't really hunt into the surrounding like this or habitat like this. They need an open, space where they can run here yeah, they can be easily get hurt if they try to hunt in the surrounding one day i would love to drive here and see she do love the cubs it's a perfect area and big trees opportunity heading back to Cedric and join him he's trying to look something good around wherever he might be Yes, definitely. I'm also hoping so. We just uh, found uh, male leopard tracks here at Twin Dams on top of our vehicle tracks coming south uh, towards Twin Dams itself. So I'm not too sure. I'm trying to figure out if we didn't go a little bit further down into the Molawati. But it's on top of our vehicle tracks we were here today. And I'm sure there was other vehicles as well. And it's on top of everybody's tracks. 
So I'm just going to quickly take a look. If it's, it looks like maybe from Olawati, but I know he's quite relaxed at my time with the vehicle. So, but what I'm going to do, I am going to shoot around into the Molawati for Molawati. Hopefully we're lucky. Let's take a look. Maybe, maybe the double name means uh, luck, eh? Molawa in the Molawati for Molawati. In that tree are two carcasses. There's a diker carcass and a water buck. Well, it's not as graceful as <laughs> He's a bit hesitant because, well, climbing a tree is not the easiest, but he will get up there eventually. So let's see, there he goes. And look at the power in that. That is a massive 500 pound cat that has just climbed a marula tree and is up in there. How cool is this? I don't know how he's going to do it, but let's see. See, the hyenas are far more tolerant of vultures than a lion or leopard would be. Occasionally a hyena will bite sort of a couple of tail feathers out of the back of a vulture, but I've never actually seen them, even once they've caught one, um, actually kill it. Oh, there we go, nearly got him. Alright, so we're in Molawati now. I'm still trying to follow up on that male leopard tracks. It's, uh, I don't know if we went all the way to Twin Dams, but uh, it was right north of Twin Dams, pretty much where the old uh, hyena den uh, was, and uh, come, coming south. Didn't see any tracks crossing over there, So, but yeah, we're in the Molawati, so we might lose a little bit of signal, but uh, just stick with us, and I'm hoping that we can get a, a last minute uh, leopard sighting here. I'm just going to try and take a look around here, but it is for male leopard. I'm not going to say exactly if it is Molawati, it is for a big male. Maybe Temba would be fantastic. I know Temba has been here before um, into this area. This actually last time I saw Temba was, was actually on top here. Um, that's the last time. Come on, please show yourself to us. Well, Mr. Leopard, I have to have some luck here. You know, while we cont uh, continue searching for this male leopard, let's head back to Rexon on his bumble. Welcome back from Sadrick. We are now approaching um, the Flemons Cutline Zoe Junction, Makupa Road, Gary Main. This is the area where most of the time you find lots of animals using the road to travel from one part to another. These are the corridors of the move or migration of the species, of course, that comes from uh, north and to the south because the road network in the area roads are a lot more and easy if you look at uh, it's dark now you can see it's more open uh, but uh, the 20 up to 50 meters wide on the road where the impala would love that to travel in the area at night also buffalo zebra lion also love the area of open clearings at night in order to see the best remember even lions and leopards that prefer a thicket but at night they tend to be like hunting into the open because games are moving into that area and also avoiding themselves to get hurt by the hoods in the area because the woodland is so thick got a lot of uh, line branches or logs on the thicket when you are if you are busy hunting you can you don't have the time to check what might be in front they, they get hurt quite a lot like what we have seen with the elephant suspecting that uh, the elephant was running in the woodland and uh, really get to damage the ear 
So it, it might happen. Some of the species, of course, that we tend to see, they're having torn off from the ears, or even lions have a gash on the side. It could be from the environment. Uh, I missed that. Uh, oh, and what is the perfect leo of a leopard? I missed the question. Okay. FC, if you don't mind, you can repeat. I only had the perfect for a leopard. We're having uh, a question while we're waiting for a question to be repeated. Let's carry on here. Yes. The perfect meal for a leopard is the medium size antelope. Of course, time and again, you find different uh, leopard preferred different meals. As far if you look at the our leopard that is, I'm talking about, uh, I mean, Hukumuri is no longer with us, of course, but uh, we have seen a very strange behavior for that particular male. He used to love hunting warthogs. But if you look at the other leopards around the area, as far as Molowati, it hunt uh, more like uh, lep uh, impala and more other species not of course the warthog so each and every leopard it will go for preference of the meal that they would like to hunt commonly you find that uh, uh, leopard prefer to hunt uh, impala that, that is very common we have seen quite a lot happening around in the area but certain leopards we tend to see loving hunting baboons this actually is how they can really hunt Love. It's how they can hunt, and it's how they can do. They love uh, eating certain species of uh, animals that we have in the area. Some of it go for gray decker, moose. But you know that uh, when it comes to the choice, leopard will choose an animal that will hunt without taking risk. That is very more important. You cannot find a female leopard trying to hunt, mainly focusing on baboon or warthog. You tend to see those big muscular males that are so strong and healthy hunting those um, uh, dangerous species as far as warthog and baboon. Easy like that. You find a leopard hunting baboon, you might know that more experience and also at the same time very strong and healthy. I'll take a good example while we're still on that. Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag Wild Earth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Well, I've seen uh, there was a leopard here in science. I'm just referring on the history of the area. Mafufunyan, Shivati. They used to hunt even baby, gira baby giraffe. Easily, baby giraffe, like under two months, easily they'll take it up in a tree. So they were huge and big, strong. Mosokwain leopard also, I find also the zebra kill up in a tree. So a baby zebra, not a full grown zebra, it, it can be so much dangerous for a, a leopard hunting a zebra, but a baby zebra easily. So those powerful males, they used to hunt something that's uh, really huge around in the area. Uh, 
I mean, if you look at Tlalamba, our favorite lax impala. Tlalamba is a very healthy leopard, strong, but she is moving in the or she is hunting in the area where it's quite a lot of. Let's see. It's wondering if a baboon can kill a leopard. Yes, of course. A baboon is one of the um, uh, omnivore species that uh, it's really, really dangerous. If you look at the baboon canine, uh, longer than anything else that not much, and that anything else that in the area is form of the predators. Even a male lion, male lions is a lot more powerful, but if you look at how long baboons can hunt, they're even sharper and even longer, so they can really cause a serious damage. I've seen baboon before fight with a leopard, and as a result, if a baboon able to bite a leopard, it can kill a leopard, yes. It do confirm in the history of service science that a one baboon male have killed a leopard. So it's, it's unbelievable how actually it can really work in vice versa. But you know that leopard is so powerful and they surprise baboon most of the time. It's not just because baboon are not strong enough to fight. But you know, leopards are the species that uh, will ambush. And once they go for baboon, it will grab it behind the neck or close the throat. With the power that they have, it's easily to kill the baboon. I've seen before, and down in the south, three female tried to hunt a male baboon and he able to defend himself, really intimidating those uh, three females and eventually leave that particular big chakma in peace because you will go up in a tree and manage to come back and chase one by one and he able to really save himself. So that I know that even I know that baboon they are so strong and they are so much powerful. They have long cannons that can really cause serious damages. While we are talking about baboons and leopards, there is one creature that of course Sadik, which is uh, really still looking Molowati around the river bed Molowati. Let's see what's up to. Yes, uh, welcome back. I am still at uh, Twin Dams. Um, as I said, those tracks are really, really fresh, and it is on top of all the vehicle tracks. So I am just scanning the area. And as well, while I'm stopping at uh, Twin Dams, as you know that uh, uh, leopards do not like to, uh, uh, of course, do the territorial calling, that typical saw that, and uh, it's very distinctive. And that's why I'm just listening, and especially if it's Mulawati, you know, he will be walking around, he will be descent marking, and I'm sure he will be calling as well. I was trying to take a look carefully here because nothing has, nothing was in the Molawati. Uh, there was no tracks in the Molawati, and uh, I didn't see anything that side. So I'm just scanning this area very nicely just to make sure. Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches, and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari, where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions, or could they be true? Join us to find out. Look at that, look at that, there's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy who just came around the corner. That is incredible, that's probably his first solo kill. Oh, that is wonderful. Oh, and have a look, here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. Yeah, look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment.
as we're still sitting here at Treehouse Dam, just listening out and just kind of uh, combing this area, just in case we see him popping out somewhere. Um, as everybody knows, tomorrow this time, um, of course, uh, just after our sunset drive for all the explorers, we do have a fireside chat uh, with, of course, uh, Graham Wellington, and he will be discussing all what's happening uh, with Wild Earth and all the new things. So please definitely log in and come and take a look. That's tomorrow after Sunset Drive. And then of course on the 22nd of May, Osana uh, is a tribute to Osana, that, that male leopard. Um, so if you've got any v uh, videos or any nice uh, footage of Osana, please uh, email them to Final control at wildearth.tv and just make sure, as I said, make sure that you, you know if it's a sunset drive or a sunrise drive and just put your date stamp on it and the time. And of course, on the 22nd of May, it will be hosted by Tristan. And you hopefully, yeah, we can put uh, all the amazing memories of Osana on the fireside chat. I don't hear anything. I think what we're going to do, we're going to continue up this road here. It did come down here, but let's just continue up here, up to dams. I think that's going to be the best. Uh, I'm actually going to go around that way. And let's take a look. I haven't heard anything yet. Benny, good evening. How often do I see Warthog at night? Well, Benny, it's uh, I don't see what target at night. They usually go into little burrows, so you'll find like exactly like your hyena den site. So usually those uh, nice holes inside of the termite mounds. Uh, Warthogs will use those uh, mounds as well as uh, safety for themselves and of course a dense site at night time. I think uh, Warthog at night time will be way too vulnerable for any of the predators, um, especially if the Warthog cannot see like the predators can, they are diurnal. So I think they will rather go and uh, nestle up inside of a dense site and uh, keep, uh, keep themselves safe from any of the predators for the night. So yes, no, no, I don't think I've ever seen a warthog at night time, <laughs> unless it's a tame warthog that's hanging around somebody's garden. Well, that's about it. My favorite thing about Wild Earth are the animals and the interaction and the ability to wait and watch and not rush off. You get to watch their behavior and learn about it, the individuals. I would like to see the hyenas at the hyena den, and I have. There they are. Look at that. <laughs> if I could be any animal, I would be a cheetah. I would love to run fast. Our Western Cape coastline is graced with a Cape fur seal. This playful species is curious and entertaining. At Hald Bay Seal Rescue Center, seals in need are rescued, fed, and nursed back to health by our well-trained team of dedicated staff and volunteers. This wonderful legacy of the center is continued as these protected creatures are rehabilitated and released back into the wild. Okay, so it's like going to go head up to uh, up to Twin Dams Road. I know he did come down this way. I did take a look around where the old uh, hyena den site was. There's nothing there. Um, yeah, I definitely looked around all over the show. Yeah, but we might lose a little bit of signal. Yeah, we are going through a little bit of a dip, a slight uh, dip, but uh, yeah, it'll be very quickly. Uh, just a brief uh, signal lost, a loss. And uh, let's see, I'll just stick with us here. And you'll see pretty much uh, his tracks are all, all on the road on the left-hand side, yeah. 
A couple that's got up here. Hold on. Let's we'll see if we can get up here. I say, and we are up. TJ, some people say Molawati, some people say Molawati. Um, I know, because the thing is, uh, since I've been working here, since 2010 yeah, in this area, uh, my tracker, uh, of course Norman and most of the, the staff and that, uh, the Shangan staff always told me it's Molawati, Molawati, Molawati. So, uh, some people say Molawati, some say Molawati. But uh, I think it's, uh, to me, it's uh, Molawati. Yeah, it's going all the way down, yeah. <laughs> oh. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I just, I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, almost, almost crying here yeah, because of uh, uh, how close we were with this leopard. But anyway, um, yeah, so it depends on it. It's the same as potato, potato, tomato, tomato, zebra, zebra. Okay, actually zebra, zebra is a little bit of a different one because I, I believe it's a zebra, not a zebra. Because if a, if a lady's called a debra, we don't call her debra, we call her debra. So I think it's a zebra. Anyway, that's just my point. Yeah. Anyway. Ah, yeah. Molawati. What do you guys think? Maybe you guys got a different point of view? Maybe some say, people say, most people say Molawati. More what do you? <laughs> potato burrito. Potato burrito. <laughs> okay, Mal. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I'm not really too fussy on that if it's more watch or more more watch, so it's either one. Now, I don't see that uh, tracks coming further here, so I think he might have come from the drainage line on that side. Up. Oh, yeah, that was now uh, a very close one. I didn't know. Oh, yeah, now talking about uh, as well another lucky and unlucky thing. So, well, it's also reading today. Now, if we you know of a red crested Quran, now, red, crest, red crested Quran is. Uh, of course, that ground roving bird, it's got the beautiful red crest that you only seen once in a while. I've only seen it once, like displaying that red, beautiful red crest. But uh, also the males display where they fly up and they forget how to fly and then they'll fall down like a stone. And just before they get to the ground, they'll actually open their wings and land. And of course, the closer they get to the ground, the more impressive it is to the female. Um, apparently, if you do see something like that in the, uh, the local uh, culture, yeah, and if you do see those males displaying and flying up and coming down, it is actually an unlucky uh, charm. So apparently something not uh, great will be happening with you. And that's uh, one of those things, if you see a red crescent Quran flying up, you must close your eyes and look the other way. So yes, before it actually starts dropping, of course. But sometimes the Quran itself is also very unlucky because sometimes they actually forget to open their wings and they, they'll they hit the ground and uh, and die. So yeah, sometimes it could also be an unlucky charm for a red-crested Quran if it doesn't get it right. That would be, would be really funny. No, it won't be funny, but uh, it would be very unlucky, put it that way. Yeah, and we're also looking for an owl. Maybe we're lucky with that owl. So we've seen that Verose Eagle owl a few times around here. Anyway, let's head to Rexon. And sorry, I just broke up. There's something about spots, but let's head to Rexon and see what he's got. Welcome back uh, from Cedric uh, with the beautiful, beautiful uh, story of Quran. We are western side of uh, quarantine. We went to Flemish Deep uh, trying to check for one of the version all that used to hang around uh, Flemish Deep itself. It's not there. It might be gone by now for hunting. 
it's unbelievable how all these uh, night creatures able to really see in the night mode of course it's really challenging to understand that it's unbelievable how they get to spot all the mice and other species that like to hunt each and every species of course even a giant eagle owl or very owl they will really size an animal that they like to hunt every time when they move in the area sometimes you get tend to see them going for scrap hair or mice or something smaller or snake if it does each and every the night vision species they really see like uh, if you are a wild earth explorer we have exciting news for you the winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colors a very useful tote bag or even a cap for those in the southern hemisphere that's heading into winter a sweatshirt to keep you warm head over to the wild earth explorers page sign up to be a wild earth explorer and you could win all of these goodies wild earth it's in your nature hukamori Oh, he is an impressive looking male leopard. Look at that neck on him. He just looks ready for a fight. This is only the third time that we are seeing him that is known as the Hukumuri male. And he certainly has a lot of character and atmosphere. This is gorgeous. Hukumuri having a drink at one of the little seasonal pans. Isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Compact, powerful, focused. I love it. If it's a defecation that's still hit, showing the heat, they will come and check. If there's no movement, it means there's nothing. They cannot do that. It's similar with the lions. A lion at night, anything that moves, even in the course of a day, a lion will be able to see that and move directly into it and is how they make a kill. Remember, if you look at the lion in the course of a day, they're easily confused by all species, most especially when they tend to move in a single file. But if you look at these uh, uh, eagles at night, they will sit and look. There's the reason most of the time, if you look at the giant eagle owl, it will always shake the head and try to check if there's a movement. If there's any movement, they will be in and they know that it's uh, a living object. Otherwise, if it's not living, they cannot really get in. It's really amazing. And I respect, I really respect all these species hunted night, lions, leopards, and more successful. It's really challenging to hunt in this area. <clears throat> We're moving to the west. Maybe we might be lucky here. You never know. Still, same area where we were, we were looking for the male lion, male leopard tracks. It looked like it might be a move out of the area. Even while driving, if we look at our, our left, the height of the grass is unbelievable. And all of this, it needs buffalo to get in here, more especially the same picture of the head that. Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag WildEarth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. I love when the buffalo uh, gets into the area where we are because it really it makes everything easy. Seeing lions, seeing leopards, seeing wild dogs, seeing everything that will be really 
in the surrounding. It's how nature works, it's unbelievable. Once the buffalo in, all the grass will be eaten, and also with the stampede from the lions when they chase them. It's in the nature how actually ecosystem or actually uh, God have created this species to be chased by a lion that they can soften the ground and easy by doing that, stop eating, it looks like us, it's causing a lot of damage on the ground. While it will wax well with the ground itself because they get dented and when it rains, it really soften the ground. It holds more oxygen and holds more water when it rains. And easily when it rains, the grass level after the buffalo, it will grow healthy because the ground is wet rather than if this uh, area the buffalo doesn't move in here it can soften the ground the ground itself and it will make anything that uh, a vegetation itself to be a little bit difficult to access water so buffalo do quite a lot of uh, important role moving into the area it makes everything flows back water flows back into soil system easily without um, struggling if honey badger thank you i think you have a lucky lucky friday yes of course i think so it's in the nature buffalo it's one of the special species we have seen buffalo we have seen uh, quite few uh, animals impala kudu uh, and we have seen more and more to machine. To me, it's a very successful. I've loved seeing all these animals coming back. It will be lovely for us and lovely for the environment. It will be healthy for everyone. I would like to really appreciate for the afternoon drive, especially my a uh, guest that I was hosting in the v uh, year on Wendy. I really appreciate my moment to Graham Wellington, the founder of Wild Earth. I really appreciate it a lot. I would like to really thanks for everyone that joins join us for the afternoon and all question comments from myself and the team. We are really appreciating enjoying us in the afternoon. And I would like to say goodbye for the afternoon. Join us, join us in the morning. It will be same time. Liam and Cedric will be live. and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised.